Guys, Dungeons and Dragons is the worst fucking movie I've ever seen. Well, yeah. It's, it's, I, <laughs> is so, the water wet? So, so, I have uh, yeah. seen a lot of bad movies, and I've seen a lot of bad movies in theaters. I skipped this one and didn't see it until two days ago for the first time. Mm -hmm. And, oh. like, not only was I checking my watch, but by the time there was only 20 minutes left, I audibly screamed, and my roommate heard me. Right. Jesus. And to top it all off, Audacity fucked up the recording, so it's all useless. Hmm. Oh, so you get, to, you get to live through hell again. So, I get to watch it all <laughs> over again! Are you so, excited? <laughs> so I have very few <laughs> memories of my younger days. Ah. But two of them are distinctly my father getting up and leaving middle midway through a movies in our living room. Dude, and I feel like this movie held me hostage. <laughs> and the, you know the two movies he left during were Dungeons and Dragons and uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Uh, uh, that, <laughs> okay. that tells me nothing about your father. <laughs> Except that he recognizes a bad movie, but also doesn't recognize a decent one. Right. Uh, Jane Son of Bob Strike Back is questionable at best. It's okay. It's, it's not, yeah, it's, it's not exactly. close to Dogma. Oh, I mean, on. no, there are worse thing. movies to watch. As a follow up to Dogma, that's the thing. It is the follow up to Dogma immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. oh no, I love Clerks too in Dogma. Yeah, I, I think Dogma, Dogma might be the peak of Kevin Smith's early work. So damn, it's been a while since I've oh, seen any of these. Uh, by the way, before I get into this real quick, uh, hi everybody, I'm Connor McGraw. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Hunter Davenport. This is my voice. I Recognize am it. Arlen Harrow, um, not dying. So <laughs> not yet. I'm Eric Fedorchek. All right, yep. uh, Kevin Smith almost died the other day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I didn't put it on the list, but hey, it it it's our uh, it's our thing, kind of. I so. guess like he had a massive heart attack while mm -hmm. like strong him, especially. They said if he stayed on stage for the second one, he'd be dead. Yeah, yeah, it was well, a. He had a hundred percent blockage of I forget yeah. the exact name of the the ventricle. I guess it was that was blocked. Yeah, it's, but... it's a lower lower body. I guess. Yeah, that, that's what I understood. But... Any ventricle that's 100% blocked is not a good thing. Right. And anything being 100% blocked inside a body is not a good thing. Ah, that's, that's good luck. That's death. Yeah. And it, I think what made it more surprising is that he's been getting healthier. Like, mm -hmm. very, it's very well known that he's been getting a lot better. And I think that made it a little bit more shocking if it was, I got kicked off the plane, Kevin Smith. It might have been less, yeah. <laughs> less, yeah. uh, less. But I well, guess... That's... When you the story was you're literally too fat to fly and then you die of right. a heart attack like no one. Yeah. Well, the yeah. thing is yeah. too, like if you're if you're extremely heavy or just unhealthy and like you make a sudden change, it's yeah. pretty stressful on your body. Yeah. 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 And I've heard more um, of, of people getting heart attacks after losing a lot of weight. Oh yeah, in like just in health in general. Uh, Eddie Guerrero died of heart failure. I think on his like fifth year of sobriety. Oh god. Oh. Yeah, that's the yeah. worst part about the story is that he had legitimately made a massive turnaround in his life, like he beat all of his personal demons, um, and then drops dead brushing his teeth. That's depressing. Mm -hmm. Now, did he beat all of his personal demons in a three-count pin, or was it a Hell in the Cell match? Um, probably both. <laughs> it, was it, was a, it was a dog cage match, or whatever Oh, that God is. damn you. I was just getting the kennel from hell match. Yes. <laughs> This, that is the stupidest thing, objectively, I've ever seen in wrestling, ever. Because Didn't the dogs just, like, it just like it, not... it didn't fucking work. Like, they just went ahead with something that just didn't... Like, it was a steel cage inside of a Hell in a Cell, which is stupid. Um, because, like, the Hell in a Cell already... Incur like, it circles the entire ring area. You don't need to have anything else on the inside. And they had German Shepherds on the outside with dog handlers, and the German Shepherds couldn't give a shit about what was happening in the ring. Weren't they, like, licking people, too? Yeah, well, they were nervous. Like, you took two animals who probably aren't used to that much noise, and you surrounded them with it. So I'm surprised they didn't attack, like, anybody in general. Yeah, that's not great. But anyway... Um, so Tony Stark got on Twitter and asked Marvel to move Infinity War up a week, and they did. Yeah. Yeah. At least that's the story that I'm taking away from this. Right. <laughs> or the one I want to believe. Yeah. Yeah. As I, as I suggested in our chat, um, this is, uh, Marvel shitting on Warner Brothers, as they, as yep. they like to do. <laughs> I mean, is it really? Because I heard there was a, oh, damn it, where's the biggest, man? Um, 
there was a story that came out that said why it happened, but I never read it. There are a lot of reasons, and a lot of yeah. But they're all hypothesis. It's all like Black Panther did really well, so why not? There's also yeah, let's keep the momentum. Yeah, and there's also Han Solo is in the same month, so why not give them more <laughs> space? Um, yeah, and, but my I, personal theory is I think it's just a combination. Is, yeah, my personal theory is. Disney hates Warner Brothers, and they're going to shit down Warner Brothers' throats whenever they get a chance. Um, that's my personal theory, though. Well, uh, didn't yeah. Deadpool... Wasn't Deadpool set to release the week after the original release date for Infinity War? It was sometime in August, I believe, if my memory is Oh, correct. okay. Never mind. Never yeah. mind. I thought it was sometime closer to uh, to when Infinity War was supposed to be coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah. mean... Fuck yes. That's like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this this makes the fact that our Iron Man review is coming out in April, it makes it work better. <laughs> yeah, it, does, it makes me actually. more comfortable. Um, yeah. Yeah, with that. Um, I don't know. It's, it's... I mean, I'm glad that we have to wait one week less to have our opinions out there, I guess. That's the real happy mm-hmm. part of this story. Yeah. And, yeah. and it does say that they're confident in their movies that, again, like... Rampage is going to be big, regardless of where they put this movie. So the fact that they're that confident in it is a good sign, I think, of yeah. how strong the movie is. So I'm yeah. also well, glad we're getting blockbusters like kind of out of the traditional season. Mm-hmm. And I think I recently it said like theater owners, partially because of Black Panther, are voicing their opinion saying we kind of want more diverse films Mm -hmm. like black panther and we want more diverse release dates for big movies because Mm -hmm. what is the traditional release schedule summer everything goes that's that's you know worth a damn yep january shows up yeah (laughs) Yeah. it's summer in the fall we get our artsy movies that are not for everyone and then in january and september it's just all the shit that the studios need to offload. It's all yeah, the things that they can't this afford. Movie to this month well, that to die. It's, it's the uh, late date Oscar bait stuff too. Mm-hmm. Is that stuff? And it's also the stuff that they that they thought would get Oscar attention, mm-hmm. and then they realized, oh, oh no, oh, oh no, 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 <laughs> oh, no, no, we no. made a mistake. No, Annihilation is way too weird for people. They are not going to get uh, behind this. Um, that entire situation. No, but they'll get back. The Gary, they'll, they'll, they'll back uh, Gary Oldman in a fat suit. Well, I mean, I think you just answered your own, <laughs> your own yeah. suggestion. Yeah. I I don't have any interest in seeing it. I love fucking love Gary Oldman. Um, here's here's what I'll say. I've actually seen that movie. It's kind of great because he is he is chewing the scenery. Um, wait, well, wait, wait, wait. Are we still talking about Annihilation? No, no. no. <laughs> the dark. No. What is it? Darkest hour. The darkest yes. hour. Um, oh, okay. but he—he's the reason to see that movie. Everything else but him is uninteresting, so you can definitely wait to see it. But he's good in it. He's very good. Um, well, with uh, with Annihilation, the thing that I was mentioning that kind of annoyed me is that I was reading that it's just going straight to Netflix and other territories other than that. Yeah, that's yeah. the studio. What is it? Paramount. Yeah, Paramount. Yeah. Paramount yeah. fucked that movie. Yeah, yeah they, they did. did. Yeah, because they. Yeah. So the last uh, Brad Gray greenlit that movie. And the new guy came in and he was like, yeah, no, fuck this. Uh, it's also the same reason that 10 Cloverfield Lane ended up on Netflix. Um, yeah. And it's it sucks because the movie wasn't made to go on Netflix. It was made for the theaters. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the point is, um, I'm glad that Marvel's moving this back, I guess. I mean, here's the thing. They already... This has been going on for a while. Like, last March... If you took the movies from last March and you and I told you what they were without telling you when they came out, you would assume that they came out in the summer, um, most likely. And if you take the movies that are coming out this March uh, and I told you what they were without telling you when they were released, you would think they were coming out in the summer as well. Um, so that says something about where these movies are and just how far back these studios are willing to push them. Um, and the fact that they're willing to just say, fuck it, any time the year works, as long as we put a good movie out, um, yeah. that's I mean, a that's, good sign, I think. Like, like you said, that's a show sign of confidence. Like, mm-hmm. they're they're, yeah. they're very confident in these movies. Yeah, I mean... I mean, would they have a reason not to be? Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. they're the biggest things ever. And also, well, like... And strictly, strictly from a business standpoint, you would think, like, hey, don't we want to try and get out 
bigger movies throughout the year instead mm-hmm. of trying to lump everything together and have them cannibalize each other. That's true. Yeah. That's, That's why, like, August is the fucking worst the summer months because it's just yeah. where stuff that, like, people are like, eh, it's like a summer blockbuster, but people might actually hate this, so mm-hmm. here you go. <laughs> yeah, it's that, and it's R-rated stuff, and it's yep. become mm-hmm. more the other thing. It's become less... This is our R stuff, and it's become more some of the trash that we usually save for September, um, which I don't like. Like, I, I wish that we had more of the Blades and the, uh, I don't know, you take your pick of an R-rated maybe, movie. Maybe if Sylvester Stallone didn't murder his own franchise, we'd have more Expendables movies by now. Yeah. 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 The, second, the second one is fantastic. But well, things you know, like speaking that. of Blade, he has a lot in common with Catwoman and Spawn. No, 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 we're, not, no we're not doing no. this again. That joke um, is dead. I killed it. But yeah, the, the Marvel thing is fun. There's a lot of Marvel stuff this week, so I'll just... So let's just... Uh, what do we want to talk about with Marvel next, uh, Gemma Chan or the seven movies, I the think, six movies that they've planned ahead. I think I think we should talk about the six movies because that's very significant. Yeah. 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 Gigantically. So they, I, I don't remember the exact number, but they know up until twenty twenty one how what movies that they yeah. are releasing. Huh. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Strange oh, there's cast. no titles. It's just we, they announced six movies. Yeah, so I'll, I'll list them off real quick. Uh, May first, twenty twenty. July thirty first, twenty twenty. November sixth, twenty twenty. May seventh, twenty twenty one. July thirty first, twenty twenty one. November fifth, twenty twenty one. So February eighteenth, twenty twenty two. Two years in a row. Yeah. Here, here's yeah. my thing. Um, I think we're definitely gonna get some sort of like. One one of the properties they did not own before Fox is probably going to be remade. Like, if that deal yeah. goes through, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and my money actually is not X Men. I think it's my best. Four. Fantastic Four. Yeah. 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 I yeah. can see that. Well, I mean, am, I, am I the one, the only one left who's like, don't do it? Yeah. No, I'm definitely on that on that train. Trust me. Well, um, yeah. I think we're all on that train. But I, I really want a good Fantastic Four representation. That's the thing. I, like, I love I think the Fantastic possible. Four. Like, I'm not, I'm I think it's saying. it's probably possible, but like it's the the problem is, and I don't know if they've addressed in the comics. Like the Fantastic Four, and I'm pretty sure we've said in the show before, is an idea so rooted in the '60s that like it just doesn't really appeal to people yeah. anymore. That's why well, the, I think the pitch that I've heard that excite me excites me the most. And this is why it won't happen, because Marvel never goes with the pitches that other people have come up with online. <laughs> that's that's uh, true. Um, is the time travel approach, where you maybe set yeah. a movie in the 60s, or you yeah, have I characters thought, who come from the 60s. I thought um, maybe just do like a goofy comedy in the 60s. Yeah. Like, and also, that'd be cool. I, I think that there's no reason Marvel can't do period pieces. Um, no. There's no, they already did, technically. Yeah, and and yeah. there's no reason not to do... There's no reason not to do a Hank Pym movie other than some of the stuff in the comics that isn't canon. Um, well, or so, some of the really racist stuff. Well, yeah. But, like, you could do kind of a proto-Avengers team set in the 70s of just the characters yeah, yeah. who were active at the time. Yeah. You already have all... I mean, you have just about everybody that you need. You have Peggy... Uh, you have Ant Man, and you have a couple other characters. I'm probably forgetting. Um, you have the Ancient One at the time. You could, Ooh, yeah, true. You could bring together a team of characters who are maybe more co or you know, covert, covert, um, you know, lesser known who do their things in the secret and secret. And the villain can be Winter Soldier. Boom! I just oh yeah, that's that's oh my movie. god, give it to me. <laughs> like set it well, in the seventies, give everybody seventies hair. Haley Atwell is your lead. People yeah. will eat that up. Um, uh, speaking of Winter Soldier, I heard a, uh, I heard it, it's real quick. I heard a very bad take from Buck Pulitzer today. I was watching their prediction video for everybody in Infinity War, and they're like, "We think Bucky's gonna die because he's nowhere near as popular as Chris Evans, and he won't become Captain America." <laughs> I was like, "Are you nope. fucking high?" They do understand like Sebastian Stan has like nine films in his contract, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that it, dude's here to stay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, uh, it's, I think it's pretty much confirmed that he's gonna do it. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, he's. Uh, I he, think I, either he's gonna be Cap or Falcon is gonna be Cap. 
One of them. Yeah. Or, or they could both be Cap. They, I mean, I don't think I they've ever done that in the comics. Have they ever had two people be Cap at the same time, I really? Think so. I um, when so. Bucky was Cap, um, he and Steve Rogers were Cap for a little bit mm. at the same time. But Cap okay. just was like, nah, I can't. Uh, Steve Rogers' Cap was like, nah, this is, this is you, Buck. And went off to become head of S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. See. Like, and I do think with the way things are pointing, I would almost say that they would go with Falcon. Um, I don't okay know. I, I really I don't, don't. I don't know if Falcon has enough appeal with the audience at this point. No, I don't, like, I don't think so too, but like, I think... Like, it makes, like, they haven't been building him long enough. Yeah. True, true, true. Yeah. That and the, the, the telegraphing with Bucky is a little too obvious. Yeah. 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 I mean, just Way that scene in obvious. Civil War with them passing the shield back and forth should have yeah. been enough for most people to realize. Yeah, and he, he has been set up more. Like, he came before... He, uh, he came before... Um, how Falcon. am I forgetting his... Yeah, I'm forgetting Sam. his civilian name, though. Sam. Sam um, Wilson. Yeah, he came before Sam, so it would make sense for him to be there first. Um, and yeah. Then, but yeah, like, there's, there's nine... Uh, 11 titles here. Um, actually, I thought it was much less than that. Um, here's the thing. I know some of these are James Gunn's space movies that yep. we heard about mm-hmm. last year. We There was this big announcement of him saying that he is going to be sort of a mini Feige of the space movies post-Phase 4. Um, I'm perfectly which, okay with yes, that. Yes, please, let's do I'm that. I'm so happy for James Gunn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm guessing uh, one third of these are those space movies, like max one third of these. Guardians space three, movies. easily. Yes, Guardians, Guardians three. three. Is there going to be a Nova film? Has that been confirmed or I, even talked about? I feel I mean, like that's not, what they're they hinting at. And if yeah. we if we assume that he's going to be in charge of the Captain Marvel films, also like if even though Captain well, Marvel kind of straddles both worlds, um, one of those is another Captain Marvel sequel, presumably. Uh, Nova was in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, so, like, he's okay. getting the push, so I think yeah. he might be. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Doctor Strange, even though I, I've said uh, how much I disliked it, um, it was, I think it was, it's still one of the most successful solo films, even after Black yeah. Panther. So, like, really? I, I think a sequel could be way better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So I could definitely see that being one of these. Um... I don't know what else could fill this though. Assuming that the, I, I'm assuming that the Fox deal is going to crumble uh, at this point because I just keep on hearing about it and Comcast keeps on coming up. Um, oh, that's a sad thought. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that would be better or worse because there's one world where it's the people behind uh, Fast and Furious doing X Men movies and Fantastic Four movies. Not necessarily yeah. a good thing. But then there's also the potentiality of the people who do Jurassic World doing oh. Marvel movies. No. Um, <laughs> so it's like, I don't know how to feel about that um, at all. So it, it's very it's very confusing. Um, well, I'd, to go back to just, all right, so there's, what, seven movies, six movies that are unnamed at this point? Yeah. The ones that we can guarantee are Black Panther 2. Like that's that's, right. that's, 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 that's a guarantee. I'm guessing that's, t- that's twenty. That's February eighteenth, twenty twenty two. Has going to be much later. Spider Man two been announced yet? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's, um, so that's, that's yeah. the. Like, they've, they've already been talking about that. Yeah. Like it's supposedly yeah. the like the after Avengers four. Mm-hmm. Right, whatever so that's, that's, whatever mm-hmm. post phase four is, Spider Man is the he's he's the backbone of whatever yeah. post phase four he's is the supposed start to be. of the next the next saga. Essentially. Yes. Essentially. Yeah, that's so it. That's uh, Sony, I think I think that. Sony has already been lobbying to get him back, haven't they? No, they've just. My the last story I heard about this was after their three picture deal with him as the lead as a co production, uh, they might not refresh it. They, which would be stupid on their part, right? And I think it really comes down to how good the spin off movies are. If Venom hits it out of the park, if Silver Sable and Black Cat hit it out of the park... Oh, well, that movie's not happening anymore, is it? It's been pushed back. Um, well, and I heard what, production was indefinitely... Forever. I, I, that's weird, because we did just do the story about the writers getting hired, I thought. 
Um, I might be mistaken on that, though. Um, but no, like, if their spinoff movies work, and the third Spider-Man Marvel, Sony Marvel team, uh, teaming doesn't work out, if it's the least successful Spider-Man movie ever, they won't renew the deal, and they'll just keep on doing whatever they want. Um, and they can still use Tom Holland, technically, uh, at that point. That they, is, that's the darkest timeline. Yeah. yeah. That poor guy. That poor guy, if that's what happens. <laughs> he'll be doing He'll be doing CrossFit and listening to dubstep, even ten years yeah. after it's not trendy anymore. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. On the, uh, on, back onto the list of stuff that, so we've covered four movies, I honestly could see Bucky as Cap, one of those movies, being somewhere in there. Yeah. Like, I feel like they would want to throw that out there because whatever is going to happen after Infinity War, I think it's a given that Bucky is going to... Especially if he mantle. has if he has six more movies left in his contract. Shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 He's, he's going to be in some of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. I could see one of these May dates being whatever they do with Iron Man in the future. I mean, I think yeah. he's... I think he's done. I think but, Iron Man's... Yes, but you know what I mean. The name yeah, yeah, Iron no, I, Man. Like a yeah. new Iron Man, yeah. Yes. I, I already have my pick for replacement Iron Man. Is, and it's it fucking... It's, yes, sure, yes it is. It sure? <laughs> yes, from Black Panther. Yeah. Oh, I'd be into that. Yeah. I, I would be well, yeah, very into that. It's a perfect stand-in for the uh, character that they introduced in comics that Ben just introduced. Riri, I think her name was? Yes. Yeah. yeah Although... And, Go ahead. Mm, go ahead. No, go uh, ahead. I was gonna say, with mm. I think it would be more interesting though if it was if they did do Riri and but Shuri was kind of her mentor. Yeah, her yeah her, her him. because she is facilitating the technology exchange. Um, True. And so her is sort of the character who finds someone to be the next Iron Man, and maybe she gets a job at Stark Industries after. Uh, Infinity War and Avengers 4 um, which is a possibility I think definitely some of these movies are going to be wild cards and just be like yeah we're making one of these movies or like we're making uh, like again, like I'll pull a name out of hat Moon Knight or something yeah. like that like something oh, yeah. oh please at least oh, at least please. like four of these are something yeah at least four of these are something completely new like yeah some of them are just going to be wild cards that we aren't even expecting um, oh, like a Hawkeye movie? <laughs> well, here's the thing. I know people, that shit's never happening. People nope. really love the Fraction run on Hawkeye, so I don't see why they wouldn't indulge that audience a little bit. Um, but you won't get but, a direct a- adaptation of that version of Hawkeye we, ever. We could, get, we could get a Hawkeye Netflix series, I think. Yeah, yeah that, I could see that happening. That suggests was... working with Ike Perlmutter on anything, so... Good point. And I think Kevin Feige would rather set Jeremy Renner on fire then hand yeah. him over to Ike. Romer. Well, it would be a kinder fate for him than to have to work with Ike on a TV show. I'm mm-hmm. so sorry. This is for your own good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Ike, like, puts himself between Ike and fucking Jeremy. He's like, nope! Yeah. yeah. But I really don't know what is coming up. Like, none of us yeah. do. And that's that's kind of exciting to me. Um, I do like it. I like it a lot. I like it. Yeah. Um, the all-female superhero team idea is another one that I've heard put out there and into the world that's well there's a I there's an animated know. thing coming out yeah and i could i yeah. could see i could see that because they they kind of have enough characters um another one of these could be black widow as a solo movie yeah because... that's i feel okay with that too oh you mean I red think sparrow movie, too i think when that movie finally happens like somewhere on the planet ike perlmer is going to hit the ground clutching his chest and like a black hole is going to open behind him and this this cosmic entity is going to take Ike back from whence he came. Right. And we'll all rejoice. <laughs> but it's going to take the form of a Black Widow toy as it pulls yeah. him down. <laughs> I was just going to say it's going to be Ollie's son from Arrow. God fucking damn it. Oh, God. <laughs> but he'll still be like the same, like he'll just be the same height, same hair, but like there's a few wrinkles and like, how fucking old are you? <laughs> Photogen Katsulu. <laughs> God damn it. Um, but yeah, one of these <laughs> is probably going to be a Captain Marvel sequel segue. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's really short. I only know Gemma Chan from a couple of things, but she's been I don't been know announced. her at all. I don't yeah. either. Yeah, but her and Ben Mendelsohn are the villains of oh, there's two Captain of Marvel, I guess. The the, the rumor I at the moment... I wonder which one's going to get killed. 
Yeah. The rumor of the moment is <laughs> I think I I think we can guess. Uh, the rumor <laughs> of the moment is that Mendelssohn is Captain Axis. Oh, okay. I don't know what that is. That's the thing. Like with Captain, Captain Marvel, Axis. we could say anything, and it could be nothing whatsoever. Yeah. Oh my god! I just had an amazing thought. What if they made an Agents of Atlas movie? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's that could never be. Happen, but... There would mm. be a giant ape on screen that is actually. Yes. Tell... I would be so into that. Oh god. Mm. Oh, she oh, was god. in Transformers the last night. Well, I haven't yeah, seen okay. that film, so I can't hold it against her. But yeah, exactly. I haven't so, seen either. I saw yeah. five minutes of it and quit. But but I know I know that she's in that show Humans, which is a show that I haven't seen, but I've only heard good things about. Um, good. And she's British, so there's at least a there's a certain standard of acting quality that she will be able to hit, <laughs> and she oh, won't yeah. go any lower than. So yeah, that's good. Well, um, back to the uh, Fantastic Four theories real quick. My theory that I think would work out best would be to say that Fantastic Four did exist in the 60s. Right. And their space travel, what ended up turning them into the Fantastic Four, was that they went into space, but instead of them being hit by cosmic rays, they ended up being taken by the Kree or someone along those lines. Right. And they've been in whatever, like, black hole, or, something like that. Or something that keeps... Like, mm-hmm. they, they ran into one of the stones and, it, like, sent them into, like, a pocket dimension or something. Or something exactly. Like something where they didn't age. But right. I think that that's a perfect way to introduce them. And their biggest contribution, I feel like, to the Marvel Universe was the cosmic aspect of things. Mm-hmm. In the comics, at least. And I think they would be the perfect way to tie a lot of that together and be introduced into it. Yeah, I mean, they could be trapped in the same dimension that Michelle Pfeiffer is trapped in, because she's yeah. canon as the original Wasp um, now. Well, I thought she was in the Macroverse, or the Microverse. Yeah, or, yeah she's in the yeah the Microverse. So they could be trapped in a very similar dimension to that. And, I mean, she could, they could be trapped in the dimension where Peter went to when he saw his mom. Um, whatever that cosmic-y place was. Um, so all kinds of possibilities of where they could be trapped. And if part of the story is they are literally 1950s, 60s characters trapped in the modern day, that's not that exactly. unusual for this universe. We've No, and I, I think that would be a great juxtaposition. Yeah. And also, if Cap is going to be taking a back seat, as we assume he is, mm-hmm. that, that kind of storytelling can exist in other characters. Um, yep. Which will be interesting. But uh, yeah, that's that's that. And then again, none of us really know Gemma Chan, but she seems promising. So I just found something she was in, but I don't think she was a major part of it. It was this kind of cool thrill called The Exam. Um, it came out in two thousand nine, like but I don't I've think heard she. That one. It's really good. It's this bunch of people go into a room. They have to take a test, and they don't know what the fuck the test is. <laughs> hmm. Okay. And it devolves into them trying to actually kill each other for a position at this fucking company. Oh, oh, oh I did. I did see the double. I don't remember what her I, part I didn't was. See the, I didn't see the double. I saw um, the Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, movie. <laughs> you saw the other one. I saw the other one. Yeah, the other the movie about the identical other movie about, twins. The other oh, movie about doppelgangers. Yes, um, directed by the same director as Sicario. So you should. Uh, you should Is it really? Watch it. Yeah, it's the same dude, and uh, same dude who did Blade Runner. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know which one that is. Okay. I didn't see it, but I know there's there's giant spiders involved in it. I mean, that, it, that's, that... An, that's an enemy. That's the Jake Gyllenhaal one. Oh, yeah, spiders okay. are supposed to be some okay. weird fucking metaphor, and I still haven't figured out what it means. It, yeah, I was reading about it. I don't. I don't know. All I know I is that the it. ending fucked with me for a few hours <laughs> because, like, I was not like I think I turned away, and then so Hunter. Basically, the end of this movie involves like Jake Gyllenhaal. He goes in this woman's room, and he's about to, I think, sleep with her. And when he comes back in the room, she's just a giant tarantula, <laughs> and she, like, screams and hisses and, go- and like, hides in the corner of the room. And That's then the, the end of the movie. That's the, the end. end of the movie. It's fucking terrifying. Like, throughout the movie, there's been, like, spiders everywhere. You see, like, images of spiders. You're like, okay, those aren't real spiders. They're fake spiders, obviously. And... Yeah. There's all kinds of weird stuff about duality and like what it means to be a human, and then at the very end, one of the characters is revealed to be a giant spider. Um, it's it's really... like Marlon Brando from fucking Doctor Moreau got his wish. Yep. 
<laughs> the film will take my head to that I'm actually a dolphin. Here's the thing. We told you the end of the movie. When you watch it, it won't be any less weird. So yeah. that, that's the kind of movie it is. So yeah, go watch I would that. Check it. the same, that's the same director as Prisoners, and it's really good. Yes, yes. Same director. Okay. Same okay. guy. Um, okay, so I guess that's a... That's a move away from the light and happiness that gives that is given to us with, from Marvel, and move to the cold, hard depression of DC. <laughs> the fucking tornado this is, somewhere. This is actually that's. I was actually to open with a tornado joke, and I totally forgot about it. God damn it! Uh, <laughs> specifically, the John Ken tornado. Um, so Time Warner may sell Warner Brothers and DC um, if their AT and T merger fails. Yep. That seems like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It is. Yeah, but it's a purely financial decision, and that's never gone back and hurt them before. So no, uh... never. <laughs> well, it's is Warner Brothers in that bad a financial no. dire street? So it's no. Time Warner, and base. My understanding of it is, but I, I don't understand business or companies or corporate law at all. So if somebody out there does, please explain it to me better. My understanding is that by opening themselves up to this deal, they have spent money, um, and it's enough money where they would be insolvent if this doesn't okay. go through. Um, okay. Or you know, something about the processes of these things working out and of the purchases being final, by not going through it, it will essentially cause the company to dissolve, and they will have to sell off their assets if it doesn't oh, go through. Cool. So, hmm. that I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me coming from uh, ignorance on business procedures, but that seems like a really stupid idea. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, here's the thing: it happens in the corporate world so much. It just never really happens in entertainment. We don't really hear about it. Um, yeah, it's it's almost like Disney purchasing Marvel and Star Wars set a bad precedent for some of these companies. Yeah. And it, so here's the thing. There's there's a downside. There are downsides to this story and there are upsides to this story. Um, among them being, if they go on sale, anybody could buy them. Anybody. Uh, people who we would think be, who we might think would be better arbiters of the Warner Brothers DC properties. Um, and people who we might think would be worse arbiters of these properties. Um, or they could just be sold off individually so you have Paramount making a Superman movie and you'll have Universal making a Batman movie. <sighs> That's a world that we could exist in. Um, remember the Marvel days when you had five Marvel universes existing at once? Um, um, I still I still like my idea that uh, it's brought to you as a special encore presentation, the Frank West and Batman Adventures exclusively on Crackle. <sighs> <laughs> oh fuck. yeah i made the joke in the chat like can you imagine like years from now it's like um marvel announces a secret wars movie and then a following headline is like batman renewed for second season on upn <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's the thing it's that's the kind of thing that could happen um and it's so <sighs> weird and we talked about this in the chat extensively um about all the different potentials um i don't know i don't know if the deal will fall through because i haven't been following this one as closely as i've been following certain other deals i should be following it closely because yeah. this would also be the second time that time warner has directly influenced uh an entertainment industry that i'm heavily invested in right because yeah. back when during the 90s wrestling boom the reason why it's not a competitive industry anymore and there's only one oh. company sitting on top is because time warner uh, basically was going to merge with AOL, and I think all the people involved were like, what is this wrestling crap? Get rid mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. yeah. And then they sold it off for, like, I, I I don't know the price, but Chris Jericho chimed in. He's like, when I heard what they sold it for, I could have bought it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Hmm. And they could have easily, like, paused it, rebranded it, and made some money off it, and then they just fucking assassinated it. Yeah. It's... <sighs> this could be... I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this story. I really don't. Huh. But Almost I, like faceless entities don't actually care about the people involved yeah. with the properties they own. I mean, huh. if, this, if this works out... Sounds like Warner Brothers. Right. If this works out, if you have AT&T as your carrier, which I don't know why you would, but let's say you did, um, and 
this works out, you'll have a free AT&T app where you can watch all of Game of Thrones and all the DC movies for free. Um, oh, God. That's a... H- I forgot HBO is owned by Time Warner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that, that's the other thing. Like, you know, we talked about DC extensively in the chat. We didn't talk about the potential of Game of Thrones being bought by, I don't know, through HBO, of course, uh, being bought by Paramount, which is a studio that's on Dire mm. Straits. And Lion there's King. a world where Paramount is like, Game of Thrones the movie! And they make ten yeah. of them. Um, that's a potential of this world um, that we exist in. And them just mining all of the HBO content if they were to buy it. Um, strip mining, not mining. Right. Strip mining. Right. They make, you know, they bring back um, The Sopranos as a TV show or as a movie. Um, and they just basically remake The Godfather, but with Sopranos characters. Um, you know, you can go down the line of things that no, they thank could you. do. <laughs> uh, a lot of really bad decisions could be made <laughs> if the oh, wrong bad people... decisions, huh? And here's the thing, like, I, I said it in the chat, good things could happen, too. <laughs> Netflix could buy Warner Brothers' entire film library and DC after this, if this all doesn't go as we want it yeah. or as we would that like would it be a huge boom yeah. yeah and i think it's a possibility because uh, as i've said in the chat and many other people have said much the same thing uh disney is preparing for all-out war um to put it lightly they are ready to launch a streaming site and actually compete with netflix which is something that we haven't seen before like crackle had about a year of <laughs> how Sony actually trying, <laughs> I mean, um, trying it, trying is operative. Trying, yeah. I, I mean, like actually doing anything with, it. <laughs> like putting any effort behind it whatsoever. And a number of other people have tried. The only successful streaming site from any of the established big studios, the big entities, is Hulu, and that's not one of them. That's all of them working together. Um, yeah, it's the only one that's really worked. The only other streaming site that even comes close to Netflix is Amazon. Um, yeah, and I hear Amazon's getting good. Yeah, because they're they're investing in a lot of different places, and some of it is coming back, and it's really high quality. Yeah, and it also... seems like they've come a long way since Zombieland, the TV show that <laughs> like barely ever saw the light of day. Um, yeah, but um, I don't know. This could go. A million different ways, um, I, but I don't, I don't know how to feel about it, because this could potentially be good. This could almost undo the sort of the effect of Marvel buying Fox, and that this spreads things around. Um, yeah, like there's this potential in this where A twenty four and Anna Purina just buy a bunch of the properties that would get sold. And they become bigger studios. Oh, God. A24 would be the perfect studio to buy up all of the Vertigo rights. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, here's my, my, here's God. my worry about the DC film rights is that is there a stigma in the industry by other bigwigs who are like, no, those movies are box office poison. Why would we fucking buy those? Fair enough. That's true. And because, because DC is not run like Marvel, is there just like a possibility that this did they just get fucking jettisoned? I mean, no. that's that's totally fair. But if you're Netflix, who's already starting to become associated with direct to TV or direct to video quality, um, that you won't care at that point if they are the ones to buy these properties. But <laughs> even even outside of that, I can't see a single studio if they had the money who wouldn't be salivating over the potential to make Dark Knight money. Yeah, that's, that's the Batman. Yeah, that's the, okay, that's Batman, and Batman's basically like untouchable. But, but I mean, if you if you are a company that or a studio that has the money to, let's say you can only get one property, let's right. say you can get like Superman, or let's say you can get Wonder Woman, something along those lines, you are going to put every ounce of creative talent and every bit of money you have into it in hopes True. that it returns. Yeah, a but then dollars. What happens to DC Comics? Because they're also owned by Warner Brothers. That's so. That's, well, that's, that's another thing that I suggested mm. in the chat. I don't think any other movie studio, and this is where I'll give Warner Brothers credit. I don't think any other movie studio would have kept the comics alive as long as they have. I think that yep. if Paramount had bought DC, if Universal had bought DC, if Comcast were to buy DC, 
right now, um, they would have killed the comics division and then just sold the comic book rights to somebody else who wanted anything to do with them and kept the movie rights. Um, I don't know, sell the DC right. I've said many times, sell the DC rights to Image or yeah. any of the you know independent ones. Sell them to IDW because uh, IDW would <laughs> they would buy it. Uh, well, they need it. Uh, yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Like I said, they could just strip mine DC, and it's not just DC. It's everything that Warner's has. It's yeah. Lord of the Rings. It's you know Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh man, <laughs> who's excited for Comcast presents Lord of the Rings <coughs> two? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, it's the Conjuring. A special twenty-part edition yeah. of the Similarian. Yeah, it's it's uh, well, no, that's still owned by the Tolkien estate, actually. Oh, it is. Yeah, because okay. the rights they're sitting to, on a gold mine there. Yeah, the rights <laughs> to the Tolkien stuff. That's a weird. That's weird. Every Similarian is owned by one studio. Uh, the Hobbit was owned by MGM. That's why it's a co-production. Okay. And then New Line has Lord of the Rings in perpetuity. Um, well, from I what guess. I know of the Similarian, it's it's never gonna be made. It's never gonna be made. Well, isn't it's it just a fucking? Made. It's a lore index, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty much. It's like I, if you said, "I'm gonna make the Bible." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make the Bible, not <laughs> not a story based in the Bible. No, That's... I'm. Just, fucking funny i'm just gonna make the bible as a whole as a movie which would be fucking insane i don't actually love it if somebody tried to do that Fuck it that. would be like it i mean you'd be you'd you'd fly at breakneck speed between god flooding the planet and people being small swallowed by whales like it's, yeah. it would be it would yeah. be a roller coaster. And, yeah it would be weird um but yeah like that i don't think that one will ever happen and again i don't know the full list of things that are part of time warner um, but this could be good or this could be very bad. I don't know. You really to tell. Honestly. Yeah, because yeah. I'm not. I'm not rooting for AT and T to be. Oh God. To own anything, really. <laughs> no. <laughs> like AT and T, as far as cell phone providers go, they're uh, bad. They're bad at what sucks. they do. Hunter, so... you're uh, you sound very far away. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I had to switch to uh, 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 the laptop mic. He's on AT and T right now. That's how. That's <laughs> yeah, AT and T. Well, you know, hey, I'm on AT and T right now as well. Well, actually, I'm not on AT and T for my internet, just right. for my phone service. So I yeah. have Cricket for my cell phone service, and I've never had a problem. Oh my, it's pretty good. That's because Cricket, you're technically on Verizon. Um, so, so that's that, that's yeah, a little. I... Yeah, um, yeah. I've I've only had to call them twice and ring them out for something, but yeah, that's fair. that's it. In like five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's the thing: all all the cell phone providers sucked because yeah. it's, there's only four of them. Because they know they have you by the balls. Is right, what it is. and two of yeah. them know that in certain areas of the country you have no other option. Like, yep. in, there are some places where your only options are Verizon and Cricket, and you're using the same cell towers regardless of which of those services you're on. Um, yeah. Um, in lighter news, <laughs> uh, Kristen Wiig has been cast as Cheetah. Uh, well, that's it's not that she was cast as Cheetah, she was cast as the character that becomes Cheetah, isn't that right. correct? Oh no, yeah. Steppenwolf. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is the same oh, thing. No, um, I doubt. Um, especially because Kristen Wiig is like an actual bankable mm-hmm. star, and what yes. is Sierran Sierran Hines? Hit? I don't know how to fuck to say his name. Um, people may only know him from Game of Thrones. And uh, that, that was that That's, guy. Yeah, that was fucking Vance Raider. Yeah, he's he's mm-hmm. also um he's 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 the recast of the devil in Spirit of Vengeance. Which oh god, god he is. <laughs> which we when we get to that movie we have to address they are nothing alike. It's, it's not even the same idea. Well, Ghost, Rider and look, Spirit, yeah. Ghost Rider and Spirit of Vengeance, the two yes. movies. Yes. Like, oh my god, no, they're it, so different. It's night and I day. The second one over the first one any day of the week. Second yeah. one is actually fun. Yeah. I've never the second seen one the is... second one. I can't wait. Dude, the second one was directed by the Crank guys. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. 
I just and I heard all the horrible things about it. It's fucking nuts. It's fucking it's insane. Nicholas Cage as Ghost Rider jumps into a what is it? A, a wrecking ball? <laughs> and he, he jumps into a wrecking ball and Ghost rides it. He turns it on fire and starts yeah. using it to fucking smash people. It, it also yes. turns into like a, a circular saw for some reason. Yes, that's also okay. what it turns into. Cool. I'm down. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. All the Thanks. action scenes are great. <laughs> the the plot and the story though. It's, it's a butter, eh. butter poppycock. Who uh, cares? No, it's like uh, there's bullshit plots, and then there's this movie. But we'll get to that when we do the review. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Kristen Wiig is Sheeta. I don't know the character. I don't know if she's supposed to be yeah. funny or serious, or she's. Well, maniacal. I want her to be serious. I would like to see Kristen Wiig do something that's not. I like Kristen Wiig, but her brand of comedy in film seems to be just. She's always cast the same person. Yeah. Yeah. I am kind of soft. Kind of got the soft suburban mom thing going on. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. No, I think I think it would be a great change for her to try and do something that might be a little bit darker, or sinister, mm-hmm. like and a bit more serious. And it's not like it's not like comedians haven't had successful superhero roles. True. Exactly. True. Yeah, she could be interesting. I I just really don't know the character. Like, I know her Dude, from I don't, lunchboxes I don't know her, and I don't stuff know her like that. The point where like I she's available in Injustice Two. I haven't touched her. Right. Yeah. Like I, don't, I didn't even know that she was like a curse. Like it's like it's kind of like Black Panther, I guess. Like it's like a curse that's passed down from generation to generation or something like that. Like oh shit, I thought it was like a genetic mutation thing or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I thought I, I thought it was something that she was cursed by the gods or something because she's yeah. I mean she's a Wonder Woman she, villain. So, so what right. happens is she stumbles upon like a cult doing a ritual and like she gets in the middle of the ritual and then she becomes a giant cheetah. Essentially. Uh, okay. <laughs> I so just, she's I, I, that's reductionist of it. But she's okay. like the leopard woman from uh that Tarzan animated show kind of. Holy shit, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I, I understand the character more now. So she's kind of like a skinwalker? Yeah. <laughs> or, or like the cat people from 1980. Did somebody mention cat people. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, like, I don't know. It, it could be interesting. I'm, I'm up for her, and I know the role was written for her, um, mm-hmm. which is interesting. That gives me more confidence in her in the role. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This could be good. I trust just about anything um patty jenkins wants to do at this point like yeah i'm, I'm yeah uh, i'm fairly confident that even if the dc stuff doesn't work out and if it does get sold off we'll still get more patty jenkins movies whoever owns wonder woman in 2035 or whatever they'll still be making patty jenkins wonder woman movies most likely um yeah. which I, i'd be into so yeah that's a that could be cool um I probably should have put this closer to the other Marvel stuff, but it works. Um, Fox is just greenlighting shit. <laughs> Here we <laughs> go crazy. again. Yep. yep. Um, so Let's there, get it out there. So I'm going to go in order of things I'm most excited about. Uh, Doctor Doom, which last I heard, it's still the Noah Hawley Doctor Doom. Yes. So, Maybe. yes. Um, X-Force... Uh, it's the Carnahan written X Force. Last I heard. Oh, I, fuck yes. That might not be happening, but he's not attached to it anymore. But it's still his basic oh, man. script. I know. Okay, I know. And the Silver Surfer thing that's been floating around for years and that I thought this was is not dead. Gonna happen. No. It feels I'll like it feels I'll like they're that. throwing things at the wall um, and just seeing what sticks. Which here's the thing: if the, if the Marvel or if the Disney Fox deal does go through, um, I guess it makes sense to make as many movies as you possibly can to establish your brand uh, and to sort of give them a sense that they should maybe continue keeping the movies separate, I I guess, possibly. Mm-hmm. I Part of me feels like... I mean, I think like the X Force One was probably already in the works with the success of Deadpool. It was. Yeah. It, ha- it has been. Yeah. Because yeah. Of, I think because of Deadpool. And I, I mean, I don't. I don't know much about the Doctor Doom one, which it, that one kind of strikes me as like. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's the Noah. Yeah, it's the Legion guy. His. That's uh, yeah, but it just. I don't know. It. Doctor Doom needs the Fantastic Four, and the Fantastic Four need Doctor Doom. Well, and, hey. 
So here's the thing. And, I don't think it's just going to be Doctor Doom. Like, well, yeah, but it's. It, I don't know. Selling it as a Doctor Doom movie means you're going to be placing the Fantastic Four secondary, and you need them to be on the same level as him. He just that's, kills him the first ten minutes, and yeah, he's that, like, "Now that that's over with." Now I go rule my country. Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know because I mean I've said it on the show before. Um, X Men First Class started out as a Magneto movie, um, and that's my. Oh my that's god! Magneto yes, has did. Magneto has more of an. I, and I hate to discredit Fantastic Four, even Doctor Doom. I feel like he could work better as a solo character for a movie, just because he's been a hero, he's been a villain, he's been right. in between. Doctor Doom has always been Doom, which right. good, bad, otherwise, he's always been working for his own best interests. Right. Well, what if it's a what if it's a Doom twenty ninety nine reboot or anime? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so oh, here's yeah. the thing: the thing from the movies that they haven't. What they keep on getting wrong, from my understanding, is that they keep on trying to make him scientifically based. But the thing no. that they've never gotten wrong in the movies, in my mind, is trying to make him less megalomaniacal and more grounded in why he's doing what he's doing. And I don't think that that's ever been a bad idea. I think their execution has been wrong. Um, mm-hmm. Although, I still fucking love Victor popping people's heads open. Like, just... <laughs> It's my favorite thing. Um, if only he didn't look like a luminescent C-3PO. I can just ignore that. Because, again, in a PG-13 movie, you see head explosions. So, so many head explosions. Um, it, it's it's the best. Um, that it's movie... like it's only two minutes where, like, Josh Trank's Cronenbergian vision came to life. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. <sighs> we have to talk about that movie someday. I can't wait. Um, oh man! Yeah. No, I I completely agree with that idea. Arlen is like showing showing why he's doing what he's doing, and even yes. like an, uh, the rise of Doom could be interesting. But it's I don't know. I I think it's just I'm too wrapped up in in my love of Fantastic Four and Doom in an established Fantastic Four comic continuity, as opposed to going into a world where nobody knows who he is and he hasn't turned into that evil yet. Well, what so if it's just like alternate universe where Doom has killed them, and he's just it, like ruling everything. In my, he's just bored. Yeah. In my head, you set the movie in Latveria, um, and it's like, and maybe Latveria is like Kosovo in the nineties. Um, Kosovo, mm. right? Uh, yeah. 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 Bosnia. Yeah. 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 Bosnia heard her, her, her genocide. <laughs> um, not yes, that down. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's a country that's like in the middle of civil war, and his parents were the rulers, and they get killed during the genocide, and it's just him years later, like trying to come to power. Um, that's a movie that could be interesting, um, but I don't know yeah. if that's here's the thing. Like, it's Noah Hawley, so for me, I instantly am in. <laughs> I don't care yeah. what he does with it. Um, what well, he's going to do something off the wall, and that's kind yeah. of what I would I would hope for. Yeah, yeah, like, he's at, like, I don't know, magician school for uh, future despots. Um, <laughs> so, I, I don't know. Oh, it could be, like, a twisted Harry Potter where the point is making him evil. Um, I'd watch that. Um, but I, we don't know anything. He never said anything. I don't know if there were any updates on what his doom would be. Um, so we're kind of just guessing at this point as to what it is. I mean, uh, honestly, my like? hottest take on it is that Silver Surfer and Doctor Doom both fall apart and X-Force still happens. Yeah. Uh, it, it's Here's the thing. It, Brian K. Vaughn has written a lot of stuff that never actually got made, um, which is why I think you're right. Because he, what happens <laughs> is, what happens is he writes things and I think the people who look at his scripts say, I don't know how we shoot that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we make that, and they're like, so we're not how gonna do, even try. <laughs> how do we? How do we? How do we do this? Like they just slide the script under a stack of other scripts. They're like, we'll get to that later. Like that's why his and then um, never do. Yeah, that's what's the why the X Man why the last man is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's why that's never happened because the studios that have had that script floating around, they're like, I don't know 
I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know how. Oh, wow. Is he the one who wrote all those Akira pitches that no one's done fuck with? N no. I don't think well, so. No, he's written no. a lot of comics, but he's also written scripts yeah. because his comics get so well known. I mean, we all know yeah. Brian K. Vaughn by name, even if we haven't read anything. Yeah. And he and he got he got really popular after Why the Last Man to the point where there was almost a Shia LaBeouf movie based off of it. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. With the director. Well, didn't, he, didn't he also Actually, do some writing for Lost as well? Yes, he did. He's written for TV yep. also. He's written yeah. for a lot of TV. I think I he would... wrote for Powers. That uh, yeah, I think he did. Um, PS PS streaming yeah. service with no. the, the PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, with the oh, guy who sure? wrote oh, Alias or whatever. Um. Yeah, like he's written a lot of stuff. He's written a lot of scripts, and I think it's just that it's all too comic booky. It's too out there for anybody to make it. So I don't think this one will happen. Um, I will say I will totally accept a current day Shia LaBeouf Why the Last Man movie. <laughs> yeah, because of all the weirdness that's gone on with him, I would I would also be into that. Um, I, I don't think Doctor Doom is as doomed. <laughs> mm, mm. That's the joke. Oh, I, I felt my spine liquefy. So good to be the on the other side of one of those. <laughs> Here's the thing: I'm so angry with myself that it happened, that I let it go. That I, um, just roll with it. Let the anger consume you. Yes. Do it. Yes. Um, but no, like I, the Doctor Doom one might happen. I, I, but again. You know, Charlie Day has this story about walking into the executives of Fox and them not knowing who he was. After Sonny, Always Sunny had been on for seven years, um, and we all know that by season seven, that show was a phenomenon. It was yeah. one of FX's biggest It's hits. funny you bring that up, because I was, I was, for some reason, I think because of the Kevin Smith stuff I was telling somebody about yesterday, I found myself watching his story about going to Superman meetings mm -hmm. and how it basically starts with him meeting one executive and he tells him the script sucks and he comes like, and they're like, okay, all right, we'll talk later. And he goes home and comes back in and there's two executives and he's told to tell the same thing. And they're like, okay, we'll talk later. And then this basically repeats itself over and over again until there's like seven executives in the room and Kevin Smith is saying the same thing he has said every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's like, I imagine it's this weird kind of water cooler situation where they're just like, yeah, this Kevin Smith guy said the, bad, the Superman script sucks. We'll bring him in. <laughs> I like to imagine it was actually the same executive who's just splitting every time he left the room. So every he's, time they uh, heard it, they were so like, shocked. He's the boys from Brazil from Frisky Dingo. Haram! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so I could see the Fox people not even knowing who Noah Hawley is. Like he, yeah, he got the initial deal to write it based off of what FX executives said, and the Fox executives gave him some room to do it because they were like, okay, whatever. This has not bitten us in the ass so far, but I think you're right again. Like I don't think that one's gonna happen. X Force has already got so much momentum behind it. Yeah, and also I... they're setting up X Force characters in the next Deadpool. <laughs> I have a so... bold, prediction, bold prediction for X-Force. I, because I know that I think Fox looks at Wolverine the same way Warner Brothers would look at Batman, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think if they're going to reintroduce a new Wolverine, this is going to be a place to put. I Real quick before we go any further with X-Force, something I forgot to mention when we were talking about Doom and briefly on Silver Surfer. Um, recently there was a bunch of solicits for Marvel Comics that Fantastic Fours have been essentially dead in the comic world to them. Oh, yeah. There well, is a ton yeah. of... No, they, it has been effectively dead. There has right. not been a Fantastic Four comic since Secret War. Because of uh, the Hickman run. Yes. Yeah. There has been a recent solicit of a ton of Fantastic Four stuff either coming back out in trade and also new comics mm. coming out. Crazy idea. What if Fox, taking the chance that maybe the Disney deal won't go through is going to actually work with Marvel like Sony did, except with the Fantastic Four. And that's why they're coming out with a solo Doom movie and a solo Silver Surfer movie. Potentially huh. wet the appetite that's of the weird, audiences. That's a weird putting the cart before the horse thing. Yeah. I, I again, don't know, though. That, that assumes, the, again, 
I think the Brian K. Vaughn script is going to be fucking crazy. <laughs> like, oh, oh. it's going to well, be... It's, it's, it's going to be like a Joe Centriotti album cover. It's just going to be madness and bright, uh, pr- and bright colors going on during the whole time. Like, it'll be the most comic booky script ever written, and the studios will be like, I don't understand this. I, I'm smart. <laughs> I don't understand this. <laughs> It's... Where are all the what? Why is there a woman in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> she's like just like on the sidelines. She's not even a major character. Why is there an hour and a half of filming time that would just be the silver floating through space, screaming about existential angst? <laughs> it, it's just it's just the executives from King Kong. Will there be boobies? <laughs> why is there a giant man <laughs> ordering the Silver Surfer to destroy planets? Why why is he make him, could you make him a cloud? Could you think about making him a cloud? Oh, now this is really starting to sound like the fucking Superman lives pitch. <laughs> I don't want him flying or saving people. He, he's a killer. Superman? <laughs> There'll be an ex-DC or Warner Brothers exec there. Wait, guys, instead of making him a cloud, let's make him a giant tornado. A giant spider. <laughs> He'll be a giant spider. And you want to know why? Because spiders are the most dangerous killers in the animal kingdom. And Jake, and Jake showing home, we'll, we'll find him in a room. Yes. yes. Ow! <laughs> wow. Jeez. Okay, I think that's as good a time as I need to move on. Unless somebody has another thing about the fox stuff that uh, sounds interesting. Yeah, I I think it's as much up in the air as as any of what the future Marvel movies are going to be and what's going to happen with Warner Brothers DC. Mm-hmm. It's with the exception of X Force, I think everything else is fair game to see if it's going to happen or not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now moving from one sinking ship to another sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Um, You're full of fingers tonight, Jesus. Uh, Sony is determined to bring back Lynn uh, and Black. Um, uh, they, they announced last sonic. week. Yeah, but this is this is the first time where I'm like, that's doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Like last week, they announced that they wanted to reboot it. Earlier this week, they announced that they want Hemsworth to be their star in doing so. So here's I'm my in. question: <laughs> when they do Lynn and Black shit. Are they going to do closer to the comics, or are they going to do straight up aliens again? They'll just do aliens again. They'll do aliens again. Yeah, okay. they'll do aliens yeah. again because you're you're, that's you're rolling dice known. in the fact that like people at Sony even remember that Men in Black is a comic first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they don't. I'm just saying. Wait, I do like, think that the way things lean, <laughs> them doing something a little bit darker is more likely um, because we're still on the dark and gritty track for some reason. Um, hmm. So, uh, Dark Knight was ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know it's so weird, um, but I can see them going very dark with it and having the MIB like actually kill people is a definite possibility. Um, yeah, but I do think they'll stick with aliens because that's what the Men in Black is associated with. I think at this point, it's that and it's the neuralizer and the overall look of things um yeah yeah i mean if they started introducing demons and whatever other crazy stuff showed up in the comics it the audience in middle america would not stand for it it would be like what is this r.i.p.d oh Oh, no no. you're right never mind mind. up. (laughs) that's the other thing i think they would go dark and gritty because r.i.p.d is as close to a men in black like copycat that we've had um that i can remember and, and it's, look how well it goes. Oh. Yeah, it's real bad. Um, <laughs> so I can see them going, well, that's... Tonally, it's not that different from Men in Black. So I can see them saying, let's go for a different tone to change things a little bit. Um, Are the comments, the RAPD comments even good? I haven't read them. Like, no like, idea. I'm, yeah, couldn't tell you. I don't yeah. know. Like, I'm, I'm confused. I, I, bet, I bet someone will come up and tell me that they're good. But Yeah, I don't know. I mean... When we eventually have to do a movie special on R.I.P.D., I mean, maybe I'll read them. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to talk about Kevin Bacon in that movie. You know what's funny um, is, like, between this and Movie Dumpster, I like the fact that there's, like, there might be now a race between, like, what show gets to what shitty movie first that happens to be based in the comic book. Well, I mean, <laughs> if we were given more time to know ahead, we could uh, set up more crossovers, maybe. Well, um, so yeah, we're on that. We have to, we have to get these other kings out first. Like <laughs> Cassidy, deleting whole files. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, um, but yeah, I'm excited about Hemsworth really doing anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. Because outside of Thor, everything, everything he's tried to do has kind of womp womp on him. Um, 
you know, what, he like works that with... race car movie and the. Well, uh... So that movie's good, actually. I really like oh, that guys, movie. guys, hold on, wait. Black Hat is the greatest movie ever made. Haven't you been in Pixels before? Uh, right. It's the right. best. It's the but, greatest film ever. But like, here's the thing: it's... you can you can see why that was a good idea, though. It's Michael Mann. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like I've been tempted to watch it because those who know me long enough know I love Thief. Um, so I don't believe that it could be that bad. But everything I've heard says that it's really, really bad. So, uh, I'm no, torn. it's the, it's the best. It is the greatest. Thirty uh, no, percent. No, those are hardcore Michael Mann fans, which is a thing. That's a that's an actual thing that exists. Um, people who think Michael Mann can't do any wrongs, Ali. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he made Ali. What? Yes, yes, he did. Um, I, you know what's funny you mentioned that is I was kind of lukewarm on Public Enemies the first time I saw it, but it was also very late at night, and that movie's long. Yeah, that's a long ass movie. That's a real long. <laughs> fucking movie his movies just keep on getting longer so i've never gone back to miami vice so i don't understand the love for that the funny thing about uh public enemies i find is that like the score seems to kind of at any moment almost threaten you to just jump right into the last mohican score and i found that very (laughs) amusing because it goes like i'm like do it it." it's the closest (laughs) thing to mohicans that he's ever done everything else has been like (laughs) a tangerine dream just fucking all day um yeah uh but yeah hemsworth is a good idea i don't know if he'd be would he be the k type or would they do for something completely different i think they do something completely different they might make a reference to it but Mm -hmm. even then i could see them going very dark and gritty for this just to get away from the light and airy and make his make his uh make his co-star michael b jordan and i will be there day one oh god yeah here's the thing he was was rumored for a while so that's that's not a bad pairing um yeah i could definitely see that working um yeah I could also see there being like a third act twist where um, Hemsworth is the bad guy. That's another possibility. Mm. Um, yeah. But I feel like they might avoid that. I don't know. They're gonna be like, like, look, it didn't really work out so well in Ghostbusters. We're gonna do this, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know. It could be interesting. Um, so that's really the bulk of that story. Until we get casting or director. Um, yeah, we don't know. This this movie is very nebulous right now. Mm-hmm. So. But, yeah, I mean, it's better than MIB 23 Jump Street, which was a thing <laughs> for a while. <laughs> so just, just be glad. Uh, um, one that I didn't actually look into, I just saw the headline, I was like, we got to talk about that, is uh, Keanu Reeves is doing a superhero movie with a uh, former director of The Flash. Uh, so yeah, that's a yeah, thing. That, that was the thing that was crazy to me, like, is that it's that director doing mm-hmm. it. The, I I skimmed over the article, but it was saying he's supposed to be a new type of vigilante. Like, yes, oh, and it, I, I didn't include it because it, I it's completely it's not unrelated, but the same director is also working on a movie called Black Hole, which is based off a comic book where these teenagers. Oh, really? Get this STD that turns them into like yeah. mutants and oh. like aliens and shit. Like that it's sucks. there's. There's actually a uh, short film someone did that was an adaptation of it, or at least parts of it, mm-hmm. and it's it's quite an good. STD that turns you into like a mutant. That would suck. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's the thing; it, yeah. it changes everybody like in different ways. Mm-hmm. Like one that's woman has ever... a tail. It's like oh the thing meets it follows. Um, yeah, kind of. That's horrible. You ever seen a? Con- you ever seen Contracted? No, I, but I know of it. Um, yeah, it's a it's a zombie movie. That's it's but it's spread STD allegory. And, yeah. Yes, fuck yeah. it. But uh, yes. yeah, and it's, yeah. it's 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 horrifyingly Oof. disgusting, and it's kind of awesome. Yeah. Well, I know I've seen. There's like a sequel on Netflix as well. So that's, yeah, this yeah. The, the sequel's premise is kind of cool. The sequel is the guy she has sex with, um, and you follow him as his as his uh, his he begins oh. to change. Okay. Yeah. They're cool little movies. They're they're fucking disgusting though. They are really <laughs> gross. Yeah, I might not. I might not be into it then. Um, mm-hmm. But but yeah, uh, Rick Bummy was doing a bunch of comic booky superhero related stuff. So that's interesting. I think maybe that's what he wanted to do. I um, will take any original superhero content mm-hmm. you push at me because yeah. it's something something different and something new, and it's something that yeah. I can I haven't spent a lot of time on. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and if he. If he gets, I mean, he can always hire the 
John Wick guys to do the stunts on the Netflix one. Why the doing. fuck not? Just keep those guys around. Yeah, I mean, John Wick is legit as fuck right now, too, with yeah. how much stunt work he does. Yeah, and again, that Black Hole movie sounds fucking great. I'm into it. I, um, oh, I'd be so excited if that actually came through. Like, I love that comic. Because here's the thing body horror, with a couple exceptions, is kind of dead at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's not really it's a thing. Dead. Yeah, well, Rick and Morty tried to bring it back. Yeah, so that well, comic book is very. It, it, there's, there's a lot of chances where some good body horror could come out of it. Um, the so last, the last time I saw a body horror movie was, uh, I think my, probably The Void, and then that that <sighs> British horror movie that I talked. I what the fuck is it called? Just What's brought the up one? The Void, and now I'm angry. Um, uh, no, it was, a, <laughs> it was a Turkish horror movie. It starts with a B. It's oh, fucking... Baskin. Baskin. Yeah. Baskin's nuts. Baskin is, oh, um, Baskin is great. Um, the Void well, is terrible. Cronenberg's, Don't watch it. Cronenberg's son did a movie, actually. I can't remember um, the name of it. Uh, for antivirus or antiviral? Something, something like I think that. It's yeah. Anti, yeah, I think it's antibodies or antiviral. It's, it's I think really it's bizarre. Antiviral. Yeah, it's and not I bad kinda, though. I liked it because it's yeah. it's it's kind of it's body horror, but it's commentary on yeah. uh, I, celebrity obsession. I cannot, I cannot do body horror. I'm sorry. It's just I, something about it. Just doesn't... no. Actually, you aren't the first person I've met who, who like has no problem with rated R movies, but for some reason has a very strict aversion to body horror. I, I can't. I'm, it's, it's tough. I'm hitting this with it. Um, like when, when my favorite season scene from Phantasm Two happens, where that thing pops out of that person's back. Um, <laughs> that got me real good um, and the greatest movie line of all time you play a good game boy um, that happened play a good game boy uh, uh, like my friend Christian who admits that the thing is fantastic he can't sit through it I can't sit oh, through it he's, like, he's, like, he's, like, he's like I saw it once it. he's like it's fantastic he's like don't ever ask me to sit through it again yeah, yeah. I, I can't uh, watch the dogs I can't I can watch every other scene in that movie I can't. I don't know what it is, but it's weird and pissed off, whatever yeah. it is. The funny yeah. story about the thing is that um, we watched it here. Like, yeah, kind of my first year living here. And um, it was when I was just getting associated with the dogs. And I know that Achilles, the smaller pit bull, reacts to dogs on screen. So this movie starts, you know, the fucking chase sequence. And he's he's up, and his little cropped ears are pointed directly up in the air. And he's staring at the screen. And he's mm. tracking this dog with his eyes. And the moment the kennel sequence happens, he gets off the couch, tucks his tail between his legs, and hid in the kitchen. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. That makes me sad. Well, oh, I mean, I don't know. Achilles also, like, he, no joke, he vomits at the sight of blood. <laughs> Funny story. When I, when I first saw the thing, I did a very similar, uh, I had a similar reaction. <laughs> Arlen tucked his head between his legs and ran to the kitchen. Yeah. I saw so. that movie when I was like eight or nine, and I loved it. So I've, I've, I, I saw it at the perfect, perfect. I love that movie. Eight, 14, it's amazing. I, that's the thing. I love that movie. I saw it at 16. Um, it's one of my top five movies like of all time. I just can't watch the dog scene. That's all. And everything else I love. Um, yeah, I don't know. Body horror, though, is weird for me. Like, I haven't watched Shivers yet, because I know it's body horror, and I know it's going to be real fucking weird, so... Oh, the fucking splintery things? Yeah, with, like, the uh, lady who, like, creates vampires through her, like, armpit or whatever. Like, oh, I, oh I'm thinking, okay. I'm thinking yeah. Splinters, never mind. No, yeah. Splinters is another movie that I, I actually have seen that one, um, where it's, like, this, like, fungus... That like yeah, it's a spiny fungus that grows out from you. Yeah, that's gross. I hate that. Yeah, and um, it's the stuff. It's not that it's not that good of a movie either. Yeah, it's it's fine. Hey, Shea Wiggum is in it. Um, he plays like a creepy dude. Um, it's fun. I don't know. It's not the best though. Um, I think I saw that the same week I watched Antiviral. Um, and Altered States. Hmm. Oh, oh, Altered I was on, States I, is so good. I was on a kick. <laughs> I... <laughs> After like the third or fourth time I ever saw Altered States, I was I was on a mission to build my own deprivation tank and then take like two hits of acid. Hunter, you ever seen Altered States? Uh, is that that's the the um is that the werewolf movie? Is that the Jeff uh, Bridges yeah. where he turns no. into like a he turns it's into William, a it's, Sasquatch oh, at the, the end? One. It's <laughs> William Hurt. Yeah, it's William Hurt, and he has a sensory deprivation oh. tank. He like regresses back into a fucking caveman. I don't know yeah, why. I have seen that one. Why that do one's... I think it's Jeff Bridges? Is is it just... I, young Jeff Bridges and young William Hurd are kind of interchangeable? Yeah, yeah I they guess they are. are. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see them playing brothers. I'm surprised that never happened actually. Because that's a no. Altered Altered State is great. 
it's worth. I would actually, out. I would actually like to see Jeff Bridges swapped into Dark City in that role. Where yeah. there it is. I'd like oh. to see William Hurt in the entire Tron franchise. <laughs> oh, all two of I'd them. I'd like Thank to see the know. dead-eyed simulacrum of him that they would have in Tron Revolution. Face. Fucking bobblehead bridges. You shut your face. You sh- sh- shut your face. Oh, I um, love Tron. Like, I'm so mad that Disney is like, now nah, we're gonna take this out back and shoot it now. Yeah, I really. Like, here's the thing: if that movie would come out five years later, it would be a very different movie <laughs> because yeah. because by then they're only like, what is it? No, Ambien comes out the same year. So they, by then, they would have had Michael Douglas doing his, like, weird youth thing in Ant-Man. So, oh, yeah. Uh, Jeff Bridges and his weird CGI face wouldn't have taken people out of the movie nearly as much. And um, see, it didn't take me when I saw it, because I was just kind of, it, like, everything else is so fantastic looking, mm-hmm. I didn't care. It was like, yeah, it kind of wrinkles in some parts, but whatever. If the problem isn't going back and revisiting it in, like, HD, you're like, mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> When you watch it now, it's like, that's that's not a man. That's the, that's a <laughs> like. Cause here's the thing: it looks like PS1 graphics now. Like, oh god, it looks really bad. Um, yeah, it's like and it's, it, the problem is it's like the Tarkin thing where mm-hmm. when you look at it as a still frame, you're like, that's cool. Yeah, and when it's and in as shadows, soon as it tries, time? as soon as it tries to be alive, you're like, ugh, kill it. It's, yeah. it's a Muppet. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's, it's my uh, it's my. Uh, favorite movie life force uh <laughs> that movie's uh, great it's <laughs> it's got it's got patrick stewart <laughs> trying to get his sex on with people it's great it's got it's got grandma tarkin yeah as a vampire man. I, I, I think it's funny that disney killed tron especially considering they spent the time to film that flynn lives teaser mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. before they, they before they had marvel so they were just yeah, trying whatever that, would stick i heard i heard in laser time because chris antista is like a big disney nerd um, mm-hmm. has a fantastic story about riding uh, Splash Mountain and asking where Briar Rabbit is. Um, oh. <laughs> I'll get that in a second. But he said um, Disney basically pushed Neutron movie out because they're like, no, we need something that we need to grab the male audience. And right. that was their attempt. And then they just fucking aborted it. <laughs> yeah. I don't I mean, think Tron Legacy's that bad. Yeah, it's, a, it's fine. I mean, I, I'll admit it as someone who's a defender of that movie, the score is the best. Part. The best thing about it. Like, More Garrett has Wasn't it all Daft Punk? Yeah, and it's fucking yeah. beautiful. Daft Punk composed like, a score. Like, it's yeah. this weird kind of symphonic pseudo electronic score. Like, mm-hmm. it's, and it's sometimes, my friend was calling it um, the Tronception score because they're like, dude, they like the out zimmered zimmered. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but it's also very, like, Williams or Silvestri also. Yeah. In certain it's, parts. It's, mm-hmm. It is, it, it is anthemic sounding almost immediately. Like, uh, I think it's for me. It's right there with the first Avengers scores, scores that I've listened to the most, um, just like over and over again. So it's, it's definitely worth listening to just on its own. Um, yeah. Okay. So I don't know what that has to do with the Keanu Reeves thing, but I'm a I'm in for Keanu Reeves because he doesn't seem to give a shit anymore. He just does things that are fun. I love I love old broken Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Where yeah. He's just like, Fuck it, I'll be in this. Yeah, I was on this mission. You'll be playing broken Keanu. Right. He's like, yeah, he's I was fucking. Yeah, he's yeah. he's become what does he become? Punished Keanu. Right. <laughs> That's yeah, it. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, I was in the earth who stood face. still. What of it, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still well, kind of like the, like one of the opening stunts of John Wick Two. I still find to be just flabbergasting as what well. he whips the car into the fucking chop shop, mm-hmm. and then like I'm convinced that he flung himself out of a moving car and just ate shit on the cement on his back because there's yeah. not a thing about it that looks fake a quick side note um were you, arlen were you aware that this was going to be a netflix film yes yes which is okay which is part of it i'm like okay i don't have to go to the theaters <laughs> to see it temper your expectations <laughs> yeah I, I know i i can ex- i have an idea of what i can expect from this um so whatever um also this is the same director of Dope. Yep. Dope is fine. Um, I, I thought like Dope. It's, it's fine. Um, you know, I, I, it's one of those things, though, where it's like Jessica Jones for me, where I went in hearing all the good things about it before ever seeing it. So by the time I got to it, it was just like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. Oh, okay. I didn't have a life changing experience. I didn't. Oh, I didn't. I wouldn't go that far. I just heard good things about it, and I watched yeah. it, and I found out I enjoyed it. Yeah. I also, 
pair that with uh, me, Earl, and the Dying Girl, and I think it's a pretty good night. That is a great movie, though. That's yes, the it thing. is. I saw that in uh, theaters. Tyler, the creator, is great in that movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, God damn it. Um, and John Bernthal shows up. Um, he, oh, yeah, he does. He's fucking great. As, as the Punisher? No. <laughs> yes. He, well, here's the thing. In every movie, he is the Punisher, yeah. but <laughs> you're not it's supposed to. Oh, no, that reminds me. I have, to, I have to send you guys a picture of my Division character who I inadvertently turned into Bernthal from the Punisher. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Your character's just um, looking for sandwiches. So moving to extras? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So the first one is the Fahrenheit 451 trailer. Boy, this uh, this Equilibrium reboot looks weird. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty close. Having, having watched that so recently, like, some of the, 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 the visuals in this teaser, I was like, God damn it, Equilibrium. You just fucking, like, you bit off that story so hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they did. Um, this just this just reminded me I haven't read Fahrenheit 451 in probably like 15 to 20 years. Yeah. I have never. I've never read it. Oh God, you guys should read it. I don't know how to read. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, fucking millennials. No, I, my I, uh, my school reading, like my ed, my the reading assignments I had in school, are of are, are fucking abysmal. Like I hear people who got to read all these cool books, uh-huh. and I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm stuck with Catcher in the Rye, and I want to punch Holden Caulfield in the fucking face. Yeah, I never oh, had to do that. Sucks. The only... My mom was a librarian, so I kind of oh. learned to read a lot of really good stuff at a young yeah. age. Huh. Oh, I, 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 I got stuck. I got stuck reading Old Man in the Sea. A fucking <laughs> um, uh, fish Catcher has got to be a fish. Man's got to be the man. Yeah, and, it's, and we didn't like it. Wasn't we read on read in our own time? The teacher read it to us in high school. So at that point, one, like, wait, they, yeah. wait what? They read you, Patrick? <laughs> wait, wait. Yes. Oh we had to sit there with open books in the class and follow along with him as he read Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> did you, did you, you have to ride a short bus to school? Like, no. Did you live in a town of the troglodytes from Bone Tomahawk? <laughs> um, I mean, maybe. Maybe. Um, <laughs> I, this is the same teacher who. Remember how I told the story about the teacher who ruined "It's a Wonderful Life" for me? Oh no! no. It's the same dude. Oh, <laughs> Do you see no. a pattern? Uh, I'm having flashbacks oh, wait, of having Eric, to Eric, have you heard? No, oh, I've never heard that story, Connor. Okay, so we had to, we we watched "It's a Wonderful Life." I knew that movie. I would watch it with my parents on Christmas. Right. I don't have a problem with the movie until this day when he started it because. It was supposed to be a lesson in symbolism and like metaphors and all kinds of like all kinds of stuff like that. And he paused it four seconds in the moment like that star shines in the sky and mm-hmm. over explains what's happening on screen and does that through the rest of the movie. That movie's what, 85 minutes, 90 minutes? Yeah, if you're watching like not a TV version. It took yeah. us like a fucking week and a half to finish it. <sighs> Because he just uh, kept, he's like, and this is, I'm like, dude, we're not two-year-olds. Like, we can understand what's happening. Like, mm-hmm. hated it. And so, yeah, similar experience with Catcher in the Rye, Old Man in the Sea, and other stuff. <sighs> well, God, it's, you know, it's the ten-year difference between you and I, Connor, is that I, right, right, I, was, I was given a little bit more autonomy in my ability to figure Wait, things Gatsby. out. Fuck that book. I hate Gage Baxby. Fuck that book. Yeah, yeah. The only of those books that I had to read um was uh what is it children not children of the no wait a second <sighs> it's the flies Eggborn children F- the, the, oh uh, lord, lord, of lord of the flies lord of the flies um yeah that's the only one i had to read that's a I fucking crazy book <laughs> oh yeah it is <laughs> that's a, is. the only book i the only book i liked was to kill a mockingbird and that was it like lord of the flies is a boy who has a vision of a talking pig if i understood mm-hmm. that book right um, that talking pig tells him to talking kill talking pig head. Talking talking pig head. Wow. And a talking a fly book. tell him to kill the other boys on the island. Um, yeah. So it's pretty it's pretty fucking crazy. Um, yeah, I read Birds of Terabithia in fourth grade, and then watched the movie because my teacher mm. apparently hated us and wanted us to feel sad. I don't know what's wrong mm. with your light with your growing up hood or whatever <laughs> <laughs> with your with your childhood Isn't um, this story magical and great about the story of friendship oh she died but yeah fahrenheit she dies horribly don't you love this story um but no so Why i are you to, crying uh, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> so for the for the lost haro Truffaut episode i watched the uh version that Truffaut did of 
Fahrenheit 451 with you mean the Apple commercial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but with all British and one German actor playing the lead, um, <laughs> so I have a very specific idea of what this is supposed to be. Um, but no, this movie looks cool. It's yeah, it's Michael B. Jordan and Michael Shannon. So do we need to fucking say anything more? Nope. Um, no. This movie. Like, it's HBO. Michael B. Jordan, Michael Shannon, uh, Michael Shannon, and it seems like it's going to be a movie or a miniseries. It's a movie. I think it's a miniseries. It's, oh, I thought it was a miniseries. It's set, it, it's, can, it's set semi-futuristic, and actually, like they make an effort to make it look semi-futuristic. Yeah. But well, yeah, that was that was the whole point in the uh, in the book as well. Yeah. Well, my you know my only visual um, understanding of Fahrenheit four five one is always very dated imagery. Mm-hmm. So okay. Yeah. Because yeah. here's the thing: that movie that we did for that Los Haro thing, this has only been made into a movie once ever um which is something i was surprised by because it seems like something like i am legend where you would think there'd be like four different versions of it um but there's only really been one official adaptation and then a bunch of things that were inspired by it um and uh, 1984 um so it's like idiocracy yeah (laughs) But, but, but i'm into this like i mean we saw Black Panther a week ago. We did our review on Sunday of uh, this week, so I'm in for anything Michael B. Jordan does at this point. Um, oh, which uh, speaking Shannon... of the Black, I was speaking of the Black Panther review. I wasn't on the episode because I hadn't seen the movie, but uh, saw it on Tuesday. It's phenomenal. I loved it. It's so good. Yes, it's it so is. good. Go see. I even think Anyways. I even think my fucking cynical, jaded friend Joe liked the movie, and he hates everything. Yeah, oh, that's so a good. Glowing endorsement. But yeah, and Michael Shannon. <sighs> I mean, Michael he's I the guy mean, who plays the same character in every movie, but he plays it differently every single he's time. He's so despicable in everything he does that he's just, he's so endearing and likable. And I think he is aware of how the world perceives it because there's no other reason why he would do that college mm-hmm. humor video where he reads the fucking sorority letter. <laughs> yeah. That well, is the, the greatest thing. I, I love with, uh, uh, with Michael Shannon, um, there's a really great, uh, say what you will about Chris Hardwick, but, uh, the Nerdist, he actually had a really great interview with Michael Shannon. It was oh, actually I... really awesome. Like, because Michael a, uh... Shannon is is low key funny as hell. He, oh oh yeah. yeah, he's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a there's a series on YouTube. I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically two actors sit down. They just they they have a conversation. They interview each other. They just kind of bullshit. Oh. It was uh, Adam Driver yep. and Michael Shannon. It's yeah. the most oh, wow. they are two seriously intense guys and they have similar uh backgrounds yeah nice and they're very they're very naturally weird interviews when other people interview them so when they're interviewing each other it gets extra weird they they click <laughs> almost they click immediately because they're just like oh yeah marines boom yeah. okay yeah like yeah that's a that's a it's actors on actors what's that's called and it's yes it's it's fascinating to see them together um, cause they were in, um, <sighs> Midnight Run? Not Midnight what? Run. Midnight <laughs> Special? Midnight Special. And they're they're Midnight Special. Wait, Adam was Driver was in that? Yes. Oh, yeah, he was. Yes. He was, I forgot. Yep. He's, yep, he's yep, the, right. he's the guy who's he's the, the agent. government. Yes, he's yep. trying to figure out. The one out that interviews the kid, yeah. Right, he's like the guy from quick. Starman. If nobody has seen, nobody... If nobody has watched the TED Talks with Adam Driver, go do it right now. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Yeah. And then... Adam Driver, I was a Marine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then see that picture that he uses in every movie ever. <laughs> like, if if there's ever a movie where he's not playing Kylo, you will see a picture of him as a Marine, and it's the same picture. Um, so that's that, that's an huh. interesting thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but uh, Fahrenheit well, would, 421 was... looks cool. Um, it, again, it's HBO. Yeah, let's do. <laughs> So this is Hunter's fucking wheelhouse. So come so, closer to your microphone, buddy. So, so, so Zach, Zach Baggins trying to kill himself, right? <laughs> well, he's Wait, definitely tempting has, fate. Has has tried or is going to? He's going to. Okay. Here's my thing with this. I like the Ghost Adventures documentary they aired on. I think it was Sci Fi Channel first. Is really good because it's got this air of low budgetness, kind of. Uh, I would say outlaw kind of nature too, where it's just you're just following three dudes around who are doing something they really like, and then some kind of nutty shit happens at the end, and whether you believe it or not is all up to you. I think 
putting this kind of stuff on this big of a platform is a little silly. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%, but I still want to see it because... Oh, I'm going to be there shit. fucking day one because this <laughs> is the kind of garbage I like to eat up. Um, you better also, say- also because, because like, Zach Baggins, like, if I'm fortunate enough, I'll probably just run into him one day in Las Vegas because he's here all the time. He lives here. Um, and he just opened up that paranormal museum. Um, I, I just really want to be, be him and be like, Zach, 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 are you trying to kill yourself? <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> you lift, bro. Just, you lift. <laughs> um, but this is based on, it's based on an episode of Ghost Adventures, isn't it? Um, no. Uh, Did they, this, oh, this wasn't filmed. Or, well, I mean, so maybe it was. They the have... house during an episode of Carl Factory, and um, apparently the house is like, has 200 demons in it, which, first of all, hell of a point. <laughs> it's, that's a ridiculous amount of demons. That's just a ridiculously <laughs> arbitrary number that's, to have. Yeah, like, yeah, you got there a demon infestation, you gotta call someone who's got a little more I, better equipment than I do. Here's my like, thing. I'm I, just, if, it, if, it, if there are demons, I think it's just one demon. Because, mm-hmm. like, there's no way there's 200 One demon who's like, there's uh, the, the 200 of us. Yes, they're I'm all just, here. I'm Nick, just Nick Cage shows up like... with a contract. And he's a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just envisioning like these these arms covered in pustules and like whatever scaly skin just bumping into each other in the house. Like, oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't see you there, Blargs. I'm sorry, the son of eternal termination. Like, like, this, this house... Uh, is creepy. First of all, it's in Gary, Indiana, which is like apparently a very bad place to live. Yeah, that's where Michael Jackson was raised. So yeah. Now, uh, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. The story is that there's an air of mystique to it because after the house was purchased and they attempted to exercise it, it was deemed a failure and they just destroyed it. Now that may seem extreme to regular people, uh, and you're right. But however, the interesting thing to me is that. If you believe in this stuff, that's interesting. But if you don't believe in it, you're faced with a guy who his power of belief was so intense that he purchased a property and then destroyed it. Uh, yeah. That is intriguing. Yeah. Well, he had to destroy it because the zoning law said you can't have over 200 people inside a building <laughs> yeah, exactly. at one time. So. Not to dive into Shadow Zone territory too much, but... Uh, I said in the chat, yeah, destroying true. a house is probably not going to do much because apparently the the Sharon Tate murders, uh, people who have bought that property and built new, like tore down the houses and built new uh, buildings on it, have said some weird shit still happens there. Yeah, I'm like, not surprised by that. Yeah, I like I like the, the story is that like it's surrounded by police and like this whole surrounding this house in Gary, Indiana. I have trouble like believing almost because like there's 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 no way. <laughs> There's literally no way. Like, I, I just don't believe it. I, I want to see the movie, because I'm sure it, it's amazing. But uh, I also so. want to I, I see it, because I want to see what this dude does with this kind of platform and budget. Yeah. I want to see what he, what he you know... I want to see what he's made of. <laughs> I also, don't dislike Zach Bagans. I think he's a fucking cartoon character, but I think he's amusing. He's, um, and apparently... You're not something like me, Ghost! Nice. You're not throwing something like me! Yeah, that's that's I like how he just gets bulkier and bulkier and has a larger collection of Ed Hardy shirts as the series goes on. <laughs> I'm like, why are you Jack? You can't punch a ghost. My favorite episodes are when he's sick because he's such like a baby about it. He's just like, I'm sick, guys. The the I'm best sick. the best episode of Ghost Adventures has them. I can't remember where they go, but the surrounding area has signs saying, "Do not enter this grass area. There are tons of poisonous snakes or something along those lines." And of course, they're documentary filmmakers. They're like. Fuck it, let's go cross this grassland. I, I had maybe underestimating how many snakes there are. No joke, these three are dodging incoming snake lunges like bullets. Jesus. They are, they are hip hopping up this fucking hill, going because they're trying to. They're they are getting attacked by like dozens of snakes. Like I said, he has a death wish. <laughs> and poor Aaron is like, I just want to go home. <laughs> I just really want to see this movie. Like I. I've heard about this for like a while now, and just like something I've always been in. Uh, he, yeah, I just really, yeah, it looks good. I'll say that. Hmm. It kind of reminds me of the nightmare. The second yeah. Sleep route, so. yeah, that's that's definitely what I noticed in the trailer. Like it, it struck me as somewhat low budget, but it still seemed like a very fascinating. Uh, I'll be right back. Content. I need some water. My mouth is drying out real bad. Yeah. 
Um, I can't wait to see him yell to ghost. Yeah. I have water for you, Connor. I heard you threw something at a woman, ghost. Why don't you throw something at me? Yeah. Um, bro, why don't you come at me, bro? This sounds like my type of guy. I'd like to go on some ghost hunting adventures with I once sold lead line DVDs (laughs) to Zach Baggins. Zach Baggins, you and I should go out on a quest together. We could defeat demons and gain back the gold of our people. There's There's a really great episode where they go to a clown hotel. Like, oh no! Wait, what? What hotel? What a hotel? clown hotel? Clown hotel. Okay, wait a second. Is this a clown themed hotel? Yes. Or a hotel, hotel only for clowns? <laughs> no, it's, it's a clown themed hotel. And like, I guess one of the clown arms moves. And like, oh, it's oh the no! Only time you ever see genuine fear out of Zach. Oh. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You're not a clown. You can't come to this hotel. I'm oh, so sorry. Wait, what did I miss? <laughs> I was telling you about the the clown hotel episode where like the clown hand moves, and it's the only time you ever see genuine fear out of Zach Baggins. <laughs> We're just Arlen had the question of like, wait, is this a clown themed hotel or a hotel only for clowns? Yes. <laughs> Either way, uh, terrifying. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just a normal hotel, but then every room you go into, it's actually oh. apparently one of the guests saw like a ghost clown. So don't go there. Uh, I won't that. be. Um, uh, do you want to go to the next door, or are there any other thoughts on Demon House? Yeah, let's go to the next door. Yeah. All right. Um, so we all saw the trailer for the Endless, right? Uh, oh, give it to me it now. Right now. Give me into my veins. Mm-hmm. Oh, I need every every bit of that movie right yeah. now. There is a shot that like filled me with existential horror. It's the the lake shot where it's just like mm-hmm. something under the water. I was like, nope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like it's just I I worry that like there's so many great looking scenes in that trailer that it's not all gonna gel together. That's a possibility. So um, these are this is a directing team. Uh, Justin Benson and then Aaron Moorhead um, and they've done two movies before one called Spring which I've talked about on here before I believe um, really mm. great movie not really horror but it's it's definitely it's genre that's let's say that. well, and I mean that's you know just because they've never directed horror isn't necessarily a, mm-hmm. a demotion against their ability to do so yeah but their, their first movie is more horror and I think it's called Resolution and it's kind of a found footage mm. thing, but it doesn't fall into any of the found footage tropes except for why do you have the camera on? But okay. that goes away after a certain point. Um, but mm. it's about this guy who's trying to help his friend uh, get clean off of uh, just everything, basically. Uh, Painkillers, you name it. Um, mm. And he does it by bringing, uh, by bringing him out to this old cabin that they used to hang out at um and get high and party and shit um and he tricks him into going out there and then he just takes all the drugs away and he like uh handcuffs him to like a bed um oh yeah that sounds like it would go well hell i mean i'm intrigued but i don't know what the fuck's going on here and then things happen um yeah crazy Uh things happen uh in that movie i'll look it up to make sure that it's called resolution whoa wait a minute this is love creation based Mm-hmm. Kind of. Kind of. Oh. Kind of. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, there's so many things in it that intrigue me on a very base level of what I enjoy about horror that I'm, I'm automatically sold yeah. on it. Yeah. And it, it, for me, it's like, even if the movie is inconsistent, these guys know how to make movies that at least look gorgeous and have mm-hmm. compelling characters. Um, the film is called Resolution, by the way. Or yeah, like... yeah, it is Resolution. Um, go see that. Also, that's a good movie. And I've I've said it before, Spring is a really good movie. Um, yeah, very good. One of my favorite movies, actually. Um, so see those if hmm. you're like I don't know about this, but um, Endless is very much in their wheelhouse from everything that I've seen. Uh, so go check it out. And they also did VHS Viral. I don't remember oh, what shit. segment they did. Um, I'd have to look at it again. I think they did the skaters, though. I think that's mm-hmm. them. 
Oh boy. See, I um, didn't I didn't touch that one because I heard it was the weakest of the the VHS movies. Yeah, it's not It's not great. No, yeah, they're it all is. Very, it's, they're all very hit and miss. It is the Tijuana. See, I, the Tijuana one is them. It's when they they go to Tijuana and they stumble upon this bone cult that sacrifices. It's a weird death cult, people. and then it's and then it's hmm. skateboarders versus cultists, and it's kind of nutty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, I I really enjoyed the second one through and through. The first one I yeah. felt was a little bit too rapey and misogynistic at times. That 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 that's, yeah. That's, yeah. The, the, the like the big net you're talking about, it's called Bone Storm. That's awesome. Yeah, it's Bone Storm. That's the name of the game that Bart Simpson won. Yes, it's it definitely is. one of the better ones. <laughs> um, let me think. Parallel Monsters is the other really great one. Mm. Where There's he, one I know of that's like a succubus thing. That's from the mm. first one, I think. That's, that's the called first I like one, you. Yeah. That's when that one's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. but it just—I don't know. I, the first VHS just didn't click with me. The second one the did. The first, v, no, the first VHS is a disgusting ninety-minute trip that's just mean-spirited. Yeah. You mean-spirited? Yeah. Uh, it's not very enjoyable. Yeah, I, no. I like the. I think I like. Is the second one with the Malaysian death cult? Yes. Um, oh fuck! Is that the one with the the, the, the um, That was directed by the guy who directed the raid. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. The, the Malaysian Death Cult is fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is the high point of it. But isn't that also the one that ends with the alien abduction one? It does. The alien abduction one. I have feelings about that one. Um, <laughs> Tell hmm. us about your feelings. I Tell us about your feelings, hmm. Ivan. <laughs> like it starts off strong, but they just like the alien. It goes on a little is, too long. Yeah, it's like yeah. Eh. At a certain point, it's like, oh, they it got the dog. I'm so I'm so in shock that the dog have you guys, died. Uh, have you guys seen ABCs of Death? I, no, I haven't watched that yet. I could know it. Those are interesting. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't it's... do those. I don't. So I have this thing. It's part of the reason why I don't like Hellraiser is because I really just don't like gore. Like, I'll, like I like gore to an extent. It's fine. But like extreme gore, I'm just mm-hmm. like, mm, mm, I don't like. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I do. I think VHS two might be the strongest of the VHS movies. Looking at them again, now that I think yeah. about it, like I like the Eye story. That's and that's out of Wingard. So, yeah. Which one, one has the? the... Story? It's the where he has the mechanical eye implanted. Oh, and he okay. starts yeah. seeing shit. Um, oh yeah. I do yeah. think the sex scene is weird. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like straight the, out of a the, porno. The um, parallel dimensions one is in viral, right? Yes, that is, and that's the best. That is my segment, favorite I think. St- segment from any of those movies. Yeah, like, because it holds back the the, the fucking weird for right. so long. And then when it finally happens, you're like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. You're like, "Oh, so it's a world where everybody's devil worshippers." I mean, that can't be that weird. Oh, oh. no! Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Her fucking her belly is all teeth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and like, yeah. Yeah, and then he oh, comes home. Hey, I might yes. have to give VHL viral a try then. Yeah, there's some weird stuff in there. Um, it's really good. It, the premise is this dude builds in his own house, like, a literal doorway to a parallel Earth where he meets himself. Mm-hmm. And then the other Earth is a fucking nightmare that they hold back until the last, like, two minutes. Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask, does he yeah. meet his parallel self? And then they fuck. The wraparound isn't great. I don't like the magician segment just because it goes on for way too long. It does. Um... But it's a cool idea, I will say that. Um, but it's like, this is just an excuse to kill, like, young yeah. girls. Like, yep. <laughs> Wait, like, you need an excuse to do that? No, it's like, a, what's that movie? All right, calm down, Ted Bundy. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it Dr. Blood or whatever, or, or Wizard of Gore or something like I've that? I've seen Wizard of Gore. <laughs> Wizard of I, Gore, yeah. I, I was not opposed to renting trash as a teenager. Yeah. Wizard of Gore. Hang on, I'll, I'll just like those movies. I think I, Hersh. Ah, oh, what the fuck is his name? I think it's Herschel Gordon Lewis. Yeah, that, um, that's correct. Yeah, he did that and a few others. And like, it's just they're not even redeeming. Like, even the gore no. is dumb. It's just like you're, this is a lingering shot of you sawing off a woman's finger for four minutes. I'm not impressed. Well, that and the, just the blood has a certain look to it that just. It's... It, I don't know, for me, it kind of pulls me out because it's like, oh, that just looks like paint that's been watered does, down a little like, bit. It's like paint. It yeah. literally looks like paint. Yeah. 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 None well, of those, yeah. old, like, those fucking exploitation slashers really hold up at all. Yeah. No. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the VHS movies, that's what we're talking about now. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Parallel <laughs> Monsters. Yeah. Uh, 
Apparel Monsters, that one's directed by Nacho Vigalondo. He also did a movie called Time Crimes. That's another one that I would That throw. movie I've is heard, crazy. I've heard Time Crimes is insane, and I haven't seen it yet. It's, yeah, it's I, the I horror need to version it. of Looper. That's what I'll say. Yep. But, yep. Uh, yeah, so you don't Very need to know accurate. anything else. Um, yeah, it's it's good. Um, Endless looks cool, though, so go yeah. go watch that. Go see that. This um, next story, I'm particularly, inter- I'm particularly interested yeah, in. Yeah, this is going to turn into VGH for a second, so I will, uh, <laughs> I'll be out for well, a little bit. not necessarily, because The Witcher is based on Russian books. Right. No, yeah. Polish. Um, Polish book, there we go. It's Metro- Scandinavian, and the, and so. The, yeah. The, uh, and the writer's a huge tool, by the way. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's why, I, that's why I brought up Metro, because Super Best Friends talked about, there's an interview, there's two interviews with both of them. And the Witcher author is very flippant of the video game industry. He's very dismissive of it. Um, I don't think he's ever seen footage of the games um, and didn't quite understand, like, the terms of the rights that he sold off. And he's super upset about it. And he's all bitter, and he likes to talk shit about, like, the adaptations of his work, even though the Witcher games are phenomenal. And they probably sold a lot of books. Some of the coolest uh, kind of fantasy ideas that I've seen in a long time because it's not – it wastes not a second <laughs> trying to insult your intelligence and treats you like an adult. Yeah. Uh, there's racism. There's slavery. There's uh, kind of high-end political schemes going on. And the monsters, you could probably spend a day just reading up on those. One of them, I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically if you have a miscarriage, you have to do a certain kind of to – basically bury this, this, this deceased child correctly or it's gonna come back as this fucking nightmare monster yeah, it'll come back as like a like ghost baby thing it's, it's not even a, it's not even a ghost baby it's it's fucking horrifying looking. It's, it looked like a harlequin baby yes yeah. except so, gooey so it's like the Grimm's fairy tales it, but like it's, very, a, it's very that's, European it's that's not that or, far off um, like it's a lot of the a lot of the enemies and whatnot in the uh, Witcher game. At least that's my only experience with it. Is uh, Witcher three really? A lot of them feel like stuff that you'd read about in like Grimm's fairy tales, like the original versions of them. But yeah. a little bit further down the path of darkness. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of oh. it's like there's the there's what is it? Drowners are these little tiny like. They're like gillmans. They're like little gillmen that will hunt. That will attack people in like numbers. Shit. Um, like and copies. What is it? They're like what is it? Neckers are the um. Yeah. They're kind yeah. of these like they're, they just like they're these little beasts that just fucking eat dead flesh. Yep. They're terrible. Um, and like they're certain, and the way the Witcher games work is that Geralt is a monster hunter by trade, but he's not just like I go around stabbing things. Like no, he has to create potions from uh from berries and herbs because certain monsters are weak against certain things and they can be poisoned and you yeah. can boost immune system by drinking some of these like toxins and and like tonics well, um, but beyond that too to become a witcher like you have to go through this insane training and like potion regiment that renders you what sterile like and kind of turns you into something that isn't really human anymore yeah, I think like, people part... call people refer to Geralt as a fucking mutant yeah, yeah. and they hate uh, him just based like... on his appearance the witcher universe is kind of cool because um it's like Geralt, Geralt is kind of a huge piece of shit in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. But he's the biggest piece of shit you would like on your side in any in any kind of quarrel. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. It's like, yeah. Witcher, it's like it's not just like fighting monsters. It's all about like Geralt and there's a lot of political intrigue and like it's it's an interesting series. Like um, I do enjoy it a lot. Because the second game is based, it's called Assassin of Kings and it starts off with you are assisting in putting down a rebellion um, from, and you're assisting, like, the king, like, he's the high king. Um, you, you you help him, you close rebellion that's, like, being done by his own son, and he's holding his illegitimate children hostage. Um, and then, after you rescue the, ki- the children, this assassin sneaks in, murders the king right in front of you, and then you're basically framed for it. Jesus. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, it's <laughs> nuts. It's crazy. I just I tried it, playing it the second one. Moves up this... I tried playing the second uh, one, and it was just too difficult. Yeah. Oh no! Here, it's the, they're they're very involved. <laughs> There's a lot. So to... I'm playing Witcher three, and oh, the third I one's just, great. The third one's fantastic. I I just said recently, I think it was on this show. I pl- I'm trying to crack Dragon Age Inquisition, 
It's just not happening because, like, the middle plot lines are very boring. And it's just lots of yeah. delegating, and it's not very exciting. Um, and The Witcher is the exact opposite, despite being of the same kind of... I'm going to use the word girth. <laughs> <laughs> that game is fucking huge. It is it pretty is. big. Um, oh, it's... But- the thing with The Witcher 3 is also that it it feels like even the most like mundane side mission, you get this ridiculous like story about what's going on. Like you'll find the oh. letter of the dead family that you were trying to save. And it's, I, it's just like, here's some gold. I did a quest, and Arlen, you might actually like this one. Hmm. I did a quest where someone was like, hey, my wife's gone missing. I can't find her. I'm like, okay. And Geralt immediately is like, she was probably killed by bears. Where's my money? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's not far um, so, off what he says. If I remember yeah, correctly. he's very. He's he, kind of initially blames the husband. He's like, "What just?" He's like, uh, "What did you do?" Because um, he assumes he he ran her off. And the more digging you do, the more this weird this gets. Um, and it turns out that this all leads to the fact that there's a fucking werewolf in the nearby woods that no one was aware of. Mm-hmm. Um, and the husband who t- tasked you to find his wife is the werewolf, and he yeah. killed his wife. That's oh, I thought. I thought that was that her her old lover was the werewolf, and she was going out and feeding him. Maybe uh, I'm, maybe I'm thinking of a different mission. Maybe. Hmm. The werewolves show up constantly in The Witcher. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. And... Hey, hey, you, you got me. I'm, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> I'm in. Um. Yeah. So the I guess the the story was about like the Netflix show, I guess, and there's a pilot now. So isn't there a The Witcher there a is. Term? Yeah. Yeah. The Witcher is designed for long form storytelling, so mm-hmm. if it's yeah. gonna be yes. just, I would rather it be that than a movie or anything yeah. else like that. Yeah. Yep. So it's uh, it's their next uh Altered Carbon, which hey, I watched that. That was good. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Oh really? Because I haven't checked it out yet. It's I'm down for Polish weirdness. <laughs> it, it, well cool you got me on the show. show, that's all I you think, need. I think Eric said it like it's very European. Mm-hmm. And it's not and we I mean like Game of Thrones looks European, but right. Game of Thrones isn't as European as The Witcher. The Witcher no. has people in like fucking frilly fucking collared shirts that have stripes going up in the it's designs you don't see in anything. One of his yeah. one of his like his party members is a bard named Dandelion. Yes. <laughs> uh, Terrible drone. And he wears an obnoxious hat and <laughs> hmm. The Witcher is kinda like Game of Thrones, but with like a little bit of berserk and other things, like yeah, it's got, it's got a lot of like things you could like extrapolate from. Uh, I'm, well, I'm interested so- in it definitely. The world does side, sound interesting. So. A funny side story with The Witcher is uh, when Obama was president, he apparently had some sort of uh, some sort of meeting out in, in Poland, and the uh, dignitary that he was meeting with actually gave him a copy or every copy of The Witcher books that were available. Holy oh, shit! Game. Yeah. Plus the game for either PC or the Xbox One. I can't remember which. But That's amazing. I just, I just like the idea that this is their biggest and most important thing that they could give to the American well, president. Like... And I like the idea of Obama getting down on The Witcher 3. <laughs> I, uh, I really like it. It's, uh, it's fun. I, I did not uh, you gotta, don't, I did uh, know Don't forget stress. to uh, cast the uh, shield spell before you go yeah, to the battle. Yeah, gotta drink my potions and meditate. <laughs> I'm a Unifer guy. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> um, I brought up Metro because um, the the I, I kind of wish Metro twenty three what is it twenty thirty three yeah yeah and could actually last leave light. the game Korean. yeah I, I kind of want it to leave the game platform because yeah, like, the story is so fucking yeah. cool yeah I like the world of that but I couldn't get past the first game because it was just eh, I don't know the what the, le- the barrier of entry is very it's kind of hardcore because it's like bullets are your are fucking currency yeah yeah and so you're like i don't want to literally shoot money into these things mm-hmm. and, it, and well, it's and not isn't like it they're Max. nicer bullets yeah. yes they're 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 nicer bullets that do more damage mm-hmm. yeah and it's not like mad max where you can play that game without firing a single shot um mm-hmm. yep even just on hard mode yeah you can just fucking knock people's fucking head fucking heads off Although you never actually get to see that graphically, really, other than when you do like a, uh, what's it called? Is it a final kill? I don't know. Finisher. Oh, yeah, uh, the yeah. Oh, the fucking the slams he does in that game are just fucking crazy. They're, they're so satisfying every time. Um, yeah. yeah. And the world of Metro is so 
bleak and cold and uncomfortable and clammy. Like everyone lives in fucking subway tunnels. Yeah. Yeah. The idea and it of reminds it me is of, cool. um it reminds me of Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl, mm -hmm. which is another cool, <sighs> weird sort of kind of Russian e uh, sci fi franchise. And that which has, has to do a with... ridiculous barrier for entry, too. Yes, it does. But the story Ooh. is cool because basically Chernobyl is not just like, it's it's not just an uninhabitable wasteland. It has now become this kind of epicenter for like weird anomalous activity, like monsters spawn up. Um, yeah. But it's there's a also. Spawn? Huh? <laughs> like a spawn, it's like a spawn cage or Minecraft? Yeah, basically, <laughs> but it's it, it's all of the it's called the zone, and it's basically anything that that radiation touched. Mm -hmm. uh, and these people called stalkers go in, and they they basically are like bounty hunters or treasure hunters who specifically go in and go out to find uh, like little like there's there's phys bounties, there's physical anomalies that you can grab. Like there's bounties people put on certain monsters, um, and it's this like thriving economy just around the zone. Yep, it's it's very similar to Metro. Yeah, based mm. off of a '70s film, so yeah, that's the <laughs> thing. <laughs> God damn it, Harlan. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's where everything goes back to for me. Um, yeah, no, The Witcher sounds cool. I guess you guys are actually selling me more on it. Um, I just looked up the writer. Um, she hasn't really done any show running before, but she's written for a lot of stuff. She wrote for The West Wing. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, she wrote for Private Practice, but then she also wrote for Daredevil and Defenders. Um, oh, okay. So, this could go a lot of different ways. Um, hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm into it, I guess. Yeah, Witcher, Witcher's cool as fuck. <laughs> yeah, can't wait for it. Um, let's see, how... We're at two hours. Do we want to do any of the other stories, or are we good? I think we can wrap. I think we can. they work. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the Snowpiercer thing. Does that sound... Interesting. Oh fuck! That's, I, that's right. There's a Snowpiercer TV show coming out, right? Yeah, that's in that just, one then. I just I don't know if it's going to be as weird as the movie was, and that's kind of what I need. Yeah. That movie. Well, here's the thing: with the TV show. The TV show will let you spend more time yeah. in certain parts of that train, so you may actually get more weird. Mm -hmm. But I need Tilda Swinton doing weird hand motions that don't really get explained all that well until the very end of the movie, and even I mean, then it's like why are you doing those? That's fair. <laughs> that's that's what attracted me to the movie, that and just seeing seeing Captain America beat the hell out of a car full of yeah. guys. And Daredevil uh, punch people with like a flaming stick or whatever. Yes. He wasn't Daredevil Wait, yet. Yes. He was in that movie? Yes, he's in that movie. He's the guy Holy who shit. has the fight when the lights go out. Because um, mm -hmm. he's the only one who can see. Because <laughs> that's weird timing. Uh, but yeah, he, <laughs> like, he's the only guy who fights when that one train car, the lights go out. Or whatever. And everybody yeah. else can't really do much. Um, and like a guy with like a torch like runs through there. Or whatever. I need to rewatch Snowpiercer because it's a weird yeah, fucking Yeah, I do as well. Um... How many of you have seen Orphan Black or have even know much I've about it? I've only heard how good I've it only is. Heard the name. Okay, so Orphan Black is it's very good for what it is. Um, it's uh, BBC America original series. It's the first thing that they did on their own that was really a hit. Um, I've watched all but the last season just because it's not. It's not the easiest show to watch episode to episode. It can get very boring at times because, I don't know, something about the way that they plot the show. Um, also, so for those who don't know, Tatiana Maslany is the star of the show. And she plays clones. Um, oh, okay. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of this. I, I just haven't watched it yet. Yeah, so clones, plural. And that's what makes the show interesting is that she plays every clone differently. Um, there are a couple of them where you're like, you're kind of a version of this character. But every single one of them is unique. And she even gets the um, chance to play one clone impersonating another clone. Um, oh, which, shit. Is, which is where it gets really weird. Oh man, or, we're in Tom Cavanaugh territory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's Tom Ca Cavanaugh before Tom Cavanaugh. Um and she's been doing it for years, and there's a reason that she won like an Emmy last year for it. So she's really good in it. Oh wow! 
The showrunner, though, of the show, even though I say it's slow, it is a very well done show, and it gets weird, um, and it's it's hard sci-fi. Like, it's very realistic, very pulled back sci-fi, um, where it's like, this is all stuff that could happen. You're never like, hmm. ah, that's crazy. You're like, I believe that there are people who give themselves tails, and people who insert like little microchips into their arms because we've all read that story um yeah so there's stuff like that where it's it's like right on the edge of oh wow i could meet someone like this who does all kinds of weird stuff and there's all there's all kinds of weird things about like genetics and like owning people's dna um and like patenting it uh so that if they are ever born you can own them as a person um Hmm. and all kinds of like weird like you know, future legal stuff that we haven't really dealt with yet. Um, and what are the rights of somebody who is a genetic experiment? Um, so there's interesting stuff in there, and this guy, he could handle a show, a Snowpiercer show pretty easily, I think, and make, yeah, it, feel, like it. make it feel believable, which is something that the movie does really well, is you never get, you never feel like it isn't, probable which is important Mm -hmm. for that movie to work in its more ridiculous moments i just Um, like how fucking on like unashamedly bleak that movie is yeah yeah it's a downer because it's so bleak like the more progress they make you're like fucking do it just get to the front of this goddamn car like i mean captain america talks about eating babies at one point yeah Um, the whole time (laughs) yeah it's like well mm -hmm. it's you know, not spoiler for the end of the movie, possibly. I'm I might be misremembering, but I know I know what happens, but don't they see a polar bear at the end of the movie? They do, and it yes. implies the planet is starting to warm up again. Yeah, yeah those kids are dead. Those, oh, those kids, kids are, are so dead. Yeah, I think the message is like those kids are dead. Humanity is doomed, but Earth will eventually go on. Yeah. 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 I so... just I just like the idea that there's an extended scene where the children are just being horribly eaten by a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> polar bear's like lunch. I haven't seen anything living in a few days. Holding the smallest one down while it guts the little girl. Yeah. Um I like the scene where they pass by the passengers who are frozen in the snow because mm-hmm. they couldn't get in the train fast enough. Mm-hmm. Well, and the people who jumped out because they thought that it was warming up. Um yeah. those that was whew. Yeah, this well, even don't they, they pass them? It's like six of them or something. Yeah, like they they pass six people, and like those are the six who tried to escape and who died, and like they're like a legend among the train. And I, like I love like there's that scene with the little children in school, and they're being told how bad the people in the back of the train are, um, mm-hmm. and they're singing this song about like what is it like how they deserve to be subjugated or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's this weird right. kind of. Um this weird kind of Simpson-y cults following of, uh, I can't remember his name, but the, the fucking... Yeah, and also, like, the conductor, it, it has kind of a, I'm not gonna, should we spoil the ending for this movie that came out, like, five years ago? Yeah, yeah I um, think it's safe, too. If somebody hasn't seen it by now, they're probably never going to watch it. So, yeah, it has, like, a very Matrix-y ending, but not in a bad way, um, where you find out that the conductor isn't the first conductor, um, and that when the conductor knows he's going to die, he has to find a new conductor. So they schedule this revolution to find the next conductor. Because and they basically, yeah, they try to weed out the population to see who is the most, like, mm-hmm. uh, I wouldn't say cutthroat, but the most willing to compromise yes. to preserve this little miniature society they have going to the train. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. the person in the back who can make it to the front is the person who's worthy of that role of yeah. taking over that position. I think, like, the, the, his, like, the revelation that, like, they're like, oh, parts break down. No one's making new parts. So you just use children. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're tiny. Just they shove be. kids into small places and make them do menial tasks all day. Well, and that, that ties into the weird hand movements that Tilda Swinton was doing. Mm. Okay, oh, wait, then. does it? Yeah, because that's that's the uh, movement that the kids are doing, if I remember correctly. Oh, to, fuck. Uh, I never picked up on that. If if I'm remembering it correctly, yeah, I thought that's what the big thing was. Like, you find out the whole, like, she pushes her hand forward, makes a fist, pulls it back. Like, that's that's what the kids, or at least the one kid you see, he's doing down there to continue to make the train operate. 
Yeah, there's oh, so many shit. weird layers to that movie. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Fucked up. I, I yeah. don't know. I'm I'm into a series. I don't see how it goes past one season though. I don't know. Um, unless you do. Unless it throws on a train. It has to be an event-based show where the first season is the only season, and every episode feels like a fucking roller coaster. Like yeah. Yeah. You you can't you can't stretch this out. Like I heard they're gonna, they might announce happy season two and i just read that book and i don't see how i don't you... know how that could work exactly how... and maybe for season two maybe there's more than one train i don't know um, well i mean if they well, might is... be doing an adaptation of the comic there I'm... is apparently another train in the snow course at here's a universe yeah that's, oh, that's, that's right there's the two because they don't they pass it yeah they yeah. do they do pass the other train um maybe well hey that could be this first show the other train like what happens to them and i think it is called mm-hmm. like snow piercer 2 or something like they didn't get inventive with the names i don't think um i think they had time to so that could be interesting and then uh, but yeah I, again i don't see how they go past one i do think this ends up being a mini series um i don't remember who's uh producing it outside of the showrunner i don't no, I really haven't looked into it just because I'm like, okay, that could be interesting if they get the right people behind it. Um, so yeah, I don't know if, yeah, I don't know how they go past one, one series. season. Yeah, because that, that's the thing when they'll pitch certain shows like The Slap. For those who remember The Slap, uh, what? <laughs> the The Slap, a show starring. Uh, Zachary Quinto as a guy who slaps Slapping a kid. A child. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's the Are whole Are you fucking with show. me right now? It, no, no, no the, thing. it's a show about a guy who slapped a kid and, and guess what? What guess happens what, after? It's an adaption. Yes. Uh, based off of a news story about a man who slapped a kid. I am speechless right now. I... Yeah. Yeah. They this this feels like a this feels like a rib. No, it's not. <laughs> but like <laughs> nope. to go look up the slap. <laughs> when that show was on, I was like how do you go past one season with this? How did, how did you get past one episode or just like a TV movie with this? I, there's slap, there's, slap there's a lot of kids that need slapping out there. Slap I guess. two, the slap thing. I would like slap, slap two. two. <laughs> and Zachary Quinto, puts on, <laughs> Zachary Quinto puts on glasses and a leather jacket. It's like, <laughs> it's time to do some slapping. <laughs> and instead, just... of using, instead of using his hand, he just slaps you with leather gloves now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch the son that. Of the slapper. I'm so glad. So yeah, slap three. <laughs> Repentance. <laughs> slap reborn then, because that was going to happen. Inevitably, because everyone has to do this. Uh, slap revelations. Right, right, yeah, and, well, slap, and would, the fifth title. one would be the slap affinity war. Right, and we all know <laughs> that eventually this leads to slap origins, um, which is. <laughs> This is our plan for the slap cinematic universe. God yes. fucking damn. Oh, the SCU. Yeah, oh, okay. We're done. <laughs> and then uh, the spinoff is called Backhand. Um, so, uh... Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's the alternate universe story. So this, is, this eventually leading to Dick Punch? Like... <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, and uh, uh, Groin Knee, uh, which is... Uh... Dick Punch is like the Avengers of that universe. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, they all come together I mean, and realize. I didn't, since I didn't get my wish with Wonder Woman, where it was just where it wasn't ninety minutes of Diana just punching guys in the dick. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll take, I'll take, uh, I'll take Dick Punch the series. No, that's what will happen when Paramount takes over Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, this is feminism, right? She's punching guys in the dick. That's great, yeah. Yeah, but what about the story? Why we can't hear you over what? the? What? Oh, look at this dick punching. God, it's great. <laughs> We can't hear you over the sound of everyone screaming in pain as uh, yeah. a Themyscarian punches people in the dick. I actually, to close on this, I actually laughed at a Family Guy bit recently because it was just this weird montage of Peter getting hit with from various angles and, and positions with a bag of nickels in the nuts. Oh, God. <laughs> and it happens for like two straight minutes, and like you're like, at first you're like, this is stupid. And then by the tenth one, you're like, okay, this is getting better. And then I think at some point he's like, on a bus, and like a bag of nickels just appears in the floor and slams them in the nuts or something like that. that the situation like becomes Family Guy impossible, skit. and then it just gets funnier as it goes along, which is the anti-Family Guy sketch. <laughs> Where the, the longer they go on, you're like, end it. <laughs> it's, 
Stop it now, please. Cancel the show. Uh, I guess we should wrap, guys. Yeah. Because I have to work tomorrow. And it is, well, I'm oh, boy. Get, it is 12.30 a.m. My weekend yeah. is over. Mine is just uh, beginning. So I've been Connor McGraw. This has been the Phantom Zone. You can find me on Movie Dumpster. We have um, Moss from the Closet coming out soon. And uh, what was the other one? I already Maybe. forgot the last step. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, well, uh, yeah, eventually. <laughs> Someday in the future. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and our recent episode is going to have to take a little bit of a delay. The weather out east knocks Joe's power out. So. Oh, yeah. God. Yep. Wow. Hanging out by candlelight all day. But if you've ever seen the inside of Joe's house, uh, lighting it with candlelight is the appropriate thing because he's got all kinds of horror props and fucking shit all the place. <laughs> I'm envisioning him holding a candelabra as he walks through the house. <laughs> Beast right. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. <laughs> Let me adjust my monocle for you. Uh, oh, rat. Um, Who else is here? Uh, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Stroke Millionaire. You can follow my game account at Stroke Games. Um, again, if you find my Snapchat, I will do something. I haven't decided yet. I will not send dick pics. Stop asking. Uh,. <laughs> Right. I'm anyone... too old. Um, uh, AA Haro and all the places. Um, I think I changed my Vivo name to Space Columbo. I'm not sure, but either way, search for it. Um, SpaceColombo.tumblr.com. Lost Haro podcast every week on Friday. Today's episode went up a little bit late, and uh, we're talking on March 2nd. Um, our Oscar preview episode, where we talk about our predictions for. Uh, who will win, who we think should win, uh, and such is coming out. And uh, stay tuned on Sunday night, because uh, I will be returning to Twitter uh, to, to comment on it and to make jokes and shit. Uh, well, oh. so yeah, go, go, go check that out. Assuming I get this up before Sunday. <laughs> I'm uh, Eric underscore Fedor on Instagram. Same as usual, dogs, comics, food, some stuff. Um, floating around the Phantom Zone, you know, ask me questions about comics. I'm try to help you as best I can. And uh, a little assignment for everybody listening: go look up the definition of macro or pedophile. Um, what? Like you macro, can... macro meaning large, and her pedophile meaning someone who is sexually into lizards. You want to fuck Godzilla? Uh, I am. So outraged that we let you do this on a weekly basis, and no one ever steps in your bits, you or just... stops you, or like, or fucking sneaks in and hits you with a drink dart or something. Baby, why do you think I wait till the very end? Uh, here's the thing. I never think. I never thought I'd find someone who has my specific brand of weird um, stuck in their brain, but I think I. I think I. I, I found three, so I'm very happy with my life. Um, so, yeah. Um, <sighs> I mean, what else is there to say after that? I could tell you a few no, things no, about no, some... No. Line DVDs! No, 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 no. Bye, 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 I'm out of fiber. My butthole burns! Oh, God damn it. Stop that. I'm out of fiber. Stop slapping my titties. <laughs> I brought it back. There we go.